And welcome once more to another episode of Legends of the Drowned Isles, Campaign 2, The Great Confusion. Uh, welcome to all those new and old to the stream. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One. This is, uh, uh, I guess I'm the host, GM, and chief uh, bottle washer, uh, also the GM for this particular game. And ha welcome to you. If this is your first time checking it out, uh, you can check out the previous 46 sessions. Can you imagine? It's been 46 sessions already uh, where we've played uh, in this campaign. You can check them out at youtube.com slash ENCAF1. If you're watching them there now, you can check them out live on Sundays, approximately 3 o'clock on, uh, on the afternoon uh, Atlantic time. But I'm not just doing this by myself. I'm with you with Every my players. Sunday. Every other, thank you, very other Sunday for the, the current schedule. Well, yeah, as you've heard, other voices are here. They are the players. Please introduce yourselves. Hi, my name is Pat. Uh, I'm playing Silas Marsh. Uh, I guess just a uh, normal warlock right now. Just plain dude. Just in the series. Totally. So Hi, um, I'm Murray, and I am playing uh, Annie, who is a rogue slash uh, fighter. Just playing Annie. Just playing Annie. Not a princess or anything. No. <laughs> Definitely I'm not. Nax. <laughs> I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medric, half orc cleric. All right. And as we left our characters in the previous week, previous two weeks ago, last time, last time with our intrepid adventurers, you had all noticed that one of your favorite barmaids, Sandra, one of the three bells of the three bells, had been missing for a little while, and the investigation led you to a terrible discovery. It looks as though both her and Dr. Marigold had been kidnapped, maybe killed, maybe taken somewhere, and certainly Marigold's uh, friend and assistant, Dolver, had suffered the cost. Uh, you found the strange uh, uh, combined dwarf, the, the strange patched-up dwarf patchwork creature, uh, in the underground, in the sewer uh, location of what looks like a, an experimental laboratory of some kind that Dr. Marigold had been using. You previously had found uh, Dolver's arm still animated and trying to slowly crawl its way out of the uh, basement uh, where, Do where Marigold does his, um, well, officially, it's where he does his preparation of the dead so they can be buried. Um, it may also be a place where he does certain other experiments and investigations. Dover was not able to communicate with you directly, having no tongue, actually, uh, but seemed to always be understood by Marigold. However, he did indicate that in his pocket he had something of interest. And when you opened it up, one a very squashed, nearly flat, mechanical rat nearly escaped. Uh, one of its uh, two gems missing, the other one gleaming brightly and threatening to, um, well, harm someone at, at the moment. Although, actually, what it needed to do was get the hell away. You managed to catch it, hold it, and put it back in the pocket, but just as you did, you discovered that Dover had passed. Now, you have a sense that Dr. Marigold and his um, new close friend, Sandy, might be involved in Clockwinder's business, as you previously associated this mechanical rat with Clockwinder. What do you want to do now? I'm holding the uh, the closed pocket, like putting pressure down on it. Okay, it doesn't seem anywhere. to be doesn't seem to be moving. You can make an insight check. If we let it go, would it lead us back to Clockwinder? Cool. So three. Oh my! Yep, it's not moving. It's probably dead. Well, I think there's a good chance it can lead it us back that or it might try to kill us again or it'll sneak somewhere that we can't fit yeah i suppose what if we held it on a leash you look around there are leather straps that are actually fairly recent in here uh there are is in the six chambers or so outside which are have a, a sort of jewel jail like appearance 
you can see that there are old ropes, things that have long decayed, beds that have broken. But in this front section, you see that there is, in fact, a full alchemical setup, it looks like. Uh, but there's also around kind of the slab of stone where Dover ended up uh, crawling, you assume. Uh, there are leather straps there, which could be potentially used. Right, I suppose we could try that. Uh, who's the best at tying knots here? You're on mute. I'm aware, and then I couldn't find my mouse for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> the moment of, ah! Um, I mean, that would probably be me. Um, although leather doesn't really tie well. Um, they do have buckles on them. You can buckle yeah, that's what I figured. Place. But yeah, leather itself doesn't necessarily tie as much. We'll tie a rope on the buckle and the the other end on the rat snack or a convenient spot on the rat. Um, and as I'm looking at all this rope and le leather straps, I'm wondering, like in the back of my mind, what were they doing in here? Like what? <laughs> anyway, there are balls of twine as well over on the workbench. Um, some rope, not a lot. The rope that's in those other rooms is all kind of rotted away. Looks like it's been there for ages. I can track it. Uh, it'll use up a fair bit of magic, but if we let it go, I'll know what direction. I can follow the direction and know about how far it is. That might be enough for us to track down Clockwinder's uh, base of operations. Yeah, yeah, that would we'd be have to do it within about eight time. hours. Uh, it would only last that long. What time is it now? Uh, it's it's early morning, I think, just after breakfast. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got time. Okay. Well, if. Uh, here. I'll do this, so if it blasts someone, it'll be me. Um, actually, I forget, there's no save on that. Anyways. Um, okay, uh, Silas will take the, uh, the package and start to unwrap it, hoping to keep its eye away from him. Okay, it's basically tucked up into one of the big pockets that Dover had. Yeah. Um, are you just, are you pulling it out of the pocket first or are you kind of tearing off the cloth? What are you trying to do? Well, I think we'd already actually cut the pocket free. Or okay. do you want me to hold to it? Wrap it up. I or, no, no, we ready. had something else we wrapped it up in. No, we, so in, basically in... we just, we just shoved it back in the pocket. We okay. didn't do anything. I thought we had that. something around it. Either way. Uh, yeah. He'll just pull it out of the pocket. Okay. Hopefully with its face aimed in a different direction. That's not Make one of them. Make a sleight of hand roll to try to 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 kind of keep its head buried and grab it by the other end. Let's see. Uh, there we go. Eleven. Okay. Um, as soon as the, the the sort of hind legs start to come out of the pocket and get exposed to a little bit of open air, the thing starts to wriggle, not very effectively. You get the impression that probably half of its limbs are bent at the wrong angles, and there's a little grinding of gears you can hear now as you're that close. You can kind of feel it um, with your fingertips, but you manage to kind of keep most of the head uh, deep in. You do kind of see that it, it, the little gem on the one side is starting to glow again. Yeah, I turn it away from us. Um, and so, I will hex it. Okay. And then let it go. There's a terrible smell as you realize it's unleashed whatever eye beam it has into the side of Dolver, but it isn't uh, harming anyone. You feel the, the hex settle in, and it feels a little bit stranger than you have experienced a little bit before. Um, it's almost as though there's only a little essence to actually grab onto. Um, it would be, you get the impression it's almost like hexing a door. doesn't quite feel as normal, but it is solid, and you have a sense of it now. And then you... And I've, I've cast it at level four, so it'll last eight hours. Okay. Um, and then you let the thing go. Uh, probably yeah, I kind, each of, of you... I kind of toss it towards the front door. Okay. Uh, it, uh, it lands awkwardly. Like a grenade. Kind of... <laughs> kind of. 
Uh, it, it lands yeah. kind of awkwardly on its side, and you see that its limbs are kind of askew at different angles, but it sort of unfolds part of itself to, to shift itself over and right, and now it starts to take off. It is moving only at half speed, which surprisingly is still pretty fast, uh, but with only a, a few seconds, it's out the front door. But you have a sense of where it's going, or at least the direction it's traveling. Okay, Silas will just wait a bit. I mean, it's probably best if it can't see us. Yeah. Because, I mean, maybe Merrick, but not Merrick, the Clockwinder can see through it or something. I don't think he can detect the hex, though. I mean, if it can see through it, it might be, they might, he might be able to hear through it, and he might have heard our plan. So, who knows at that point. Mm. Yep. Uh, so Silas is going to follow a ways behind, uh, far enough that uh, I mean maybe we can hear it scrab scrabbling, but uh, hopefully wouldn't be able to see us. I'll just follow Silas. Okay, just kind of. And then just using his uh, master, what was it? Shoot, his curse expert ability. Uh, if the target of the curse leaves your sight, you have a vague feeling of the direction and distance to them. I can't pinpoint them or negate the adva disadvantage for hitting a hidden target, but I know roughly what direction and how far. Okay. Um, periodically, what we'll do is you'll be rolling um, some sort of sensory check to figure out exactly which direction to go next, and that'll basically determine how, how long this takes. Sure. Um, so, um, you're all just following? Yep. Okay. Um, we'll do the first century check. Um, let's just call this, hmm, what would you, what would you, uh, uh, recommend? I'm thinking perception or survival, mm -hmm. but perception is probably the better one in this case. Yeah, survival is pretty thing. crappy. Okay. All right, let's try a perception check just to get that first initial bearing. Yep, I just did. Let's see. Wow, what nine total. <laughs> thing, no, this is not. Can't see it. Something happened, and now I've closed roll 20. I'll be back in a minute, uh, but it should be in the roll 20. Looks like a 12. Thing. Okay. Um, Medrick, the only reason he can do the perception check is because he's got this mystical connection to it. Okay, uh, and he's he's purposely kind of held everybody back so that you weren't right, being right. weren't crowding it, so you don't see it, um, and you did hear it kind of uh, scrabble out the door, and there's a a sound that maybe it crossed that wooden bridge that's outside, but you're not entirely certain, um, and you see Silas kind of probably cock his head a little bit as if trying to see something that's way off in the distance, and you're fairly confident that it went out the door. Beyond that, it's it's already uh, a lot farther away than you had expected, but you're not entirely certain of the direction from down here. Maybe it's because as soon as you step out the door once more, the the, the smell of the sewer uh, assaults you. Uh, maybe it's just a particularly fragrant day. Maybe you didn't notice on the way in because you were already desperate, but right now it just sort of overwhelms your senses. Um, where do you go? Uh, if he doesn't know the direction to go, he'd wait and try to get a stronger reading on it. Okay. So you take a few minutes. Um, all of you are kind of feeling there's probably outer layers of your skin or at the very least the hairs of your nose, which are curling up a little bit from the, uh, the overwhelming stench. But, uh, how long do you wait? Just a couple of minutes? Uh, so let's could we wait outside. This is disgusting. That might actually be better. I doubt, uh, I... What we're looking for is probably Clockwinder's uh, warehouse. Yes. So, yeah, we could head to the surface, and I can try tracking it still. I mean, if it's going back to the warehouse, it'll lead us there eventually. Okay. And it'll be less stinky. Yes, that. We know what Silas is engaged with. Are Annie and Medrick trying anything to help out? There's not There's much that I really can do. Yeah. Okay. Um, you can keep an eye out to see if you see actual signs of it if you happen to cross the track. Yeah. What what I'll do is that I'll use my because I've been doing a lot of patrols and stuff through the uh, 
through the town, so I'll use my, like, knowledge of side streets and stuff to say, like, okay, if it's going that direction, this is how we should go. Okay, okay. Um, I'll try to keep an eye out on it for any tracks that the rat, that the rat might have left. All right. Are you climbing back up through the trap door in Marigold's place, or are you going to try to go for one of the other entrances? Are the other ones locked? They are typically. Yeah, we might as well. This one's close, so we might yeah. as well just head back out. Okay. All right, let's do that. If we can avoid trekking through the sewers, that's great. It only takes you a few minutes to, to, to go back through and climb up the stairs. Um, I, did you leave the trap door open or did you close it? No, I think we, uh, I don't think we closed it. Okay. Well, it's still propped up then. Uh, it means you don't have to be delayed by opening it up again. Uh, Medric, make a, uh, uh, a perception check. Yeah. Do we want to let the hand loose? Or see if oh it's my still god! Moving. I'm rolling shit. Seven total. Even though I got a plus five. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The stench, man. I swear. If it came this way, you can't really tell because all the the little accumulations of of things you didn't think were on your boots, but now realize that there's a little bit of kind of a kind of a a dew, an ugly, awful dew from the yes. uh, from the accumulation down there, which is on your boots, and it's it's kind of making a mess of of what if there was any pathway coming out. Um, Silas, you can make another another perception track to try to pick up the uh, the scent, if you will, not the scent so much in this case, but the uh, the sense of it. You do 22. see now that the the arm has crawled to the front door, which you cl you guys closed, uh, but it does not seem to be moving at the moment, at least not on the instant you look. Twenty two. All right, you've got a good sense of it. Um, you've got a good sense, uh, sort of in a vague westerly direction from here. Um, it's hard to navigate yourself, navigate for yourself inside. If you mention that, um, then Andy might have a chance of figuring out where that, what that relates to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he would tell them. Okay. Um, from here, from here, this would be leading out towards the bay. Okay. Uh... Makes sense. Docks are in that direction. I'll make a survival roll to see if I can figure out what. Oh, that's decent. That's decent. 19. What are you trying to figure out? To, to try to figure out, like, the best way to get there. Okay. So, a 19. All right. Um, you know that the main road is more or less going directly to the docks to a certain point, and then it kind of breaks off into all the little loading the loading areas. Um, and the docks themselves stretch on for quite some distance across the bay. Uh, but you have a decent sense of, of a very quick route to get there. Um, are you guys... Avoiding just... the, the crowds. Yep. You know where all the, uh, the events have been set up. Um, this will take you away from all of them. Um, in particular, at the last minute, you sort of realize that, oh, wait, there's the, the, uh, the emu races, which are down at one end of the docks. And if you'd gone that way, you probably would have gotten caught in that... Uh, in that uh, the crowd and the Fuhrer there, which they're probably going to be setting up fairly soon. So you'd realize to divert a little bit uh, further south and take a different entrance onto the dock. Um, you get outside. I don't want to direct what you guys are doing. I just want to confirm. Yeah, we'll follow whatever uh, path any thinks will get us yeah. there more directly. I like the idea of outside in, in, in a less smelly location. Yeah. Okay, it's a fully fully day now. It was kind of early morning. Uh, now the sun is is uh, easily crested over. Um, do you examine the hand as you pass by it, or just leave it there and close the door, or what? I'll I'll just give it a nudge with my foot. Like, is it still moving? Is it alive? Okay. Uh, when you nudge it, uh, it does react. The 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 fingers kind of curl in. They're moving a lot slower than they were before, but it does still seem to be moving. And you can see the sort of greenish trail behind where it had been dragging itself towards the door. Yeah. Is there like any clothes? Are there, are there like any like pieces of clothes clothes attached to it, or? Uh, it still has a sleeve. Is there a pocket in it by any chance? Uh, not in the arm, no. Okay. 
Yeah, I mean, look, it's not like not... side pockets and sleeves. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> sure what to do about this. I don't know where it's going. And if we just let it loose, yeah, the townspeople are going to freak people. out. Yeah. What to do about a wayward arm? I'll grab the hand in okay. a, as comforting as possible manner, and it's like, we'll find who did this, and we'll make them pay. It grips onto your hand tightly. Okay. The hand doesn't have ears, Medrick. But I figured he could like understand the intent. It's like we got this, bro. Okay, you can let it it would understand but yeah if it's not a spirit thing it seems to want to go with you yeah it does could we perhaps wrap it up so it looked like something different uh i, I mean gonna... i i have uh I, I have disguise to get proficiency i can try to make it look like something else with that but <laughs> you, you did see that there are cloth bags, like rough cloth bags that uh, he has, that uh, Marigold has in the back. They are basically the burlap equivalent of uh, of body bags. Okay. And some sailcloth so type stuff. It feels like this hand is crawling to wherever Marigold is. So if we lose track of the rat, we can always just like plop this thing on the ground and see where it's yeah. reaching towards. Well, let's I'll find a like, bag to hide yeah. it in. I'll just pry the fingers off of my hand. Okay, make a strength check. Oh, are it we time wrestling to, now? It does not seem to want to let go. Strength is plus three. Fifteen. Okay. It, it is weakened. You, you have a feeling that this hand, which is actually larger than your hand, uh, if you recall, the Dover had these gigantic arms. Yeah. Uh, and the, the arm itself is fairly heavy. Um, but it feels as though it has weakened considerably from what you would have expected of a full grip. Uh, and you are able to kind of gently pry the fingers uh, loose. Um, and as soon as you do and you're kind of holding on to it, uh, you, you can feel almost a sense of it of it letting letting loose a little bit even more, almost as though um, it, it liked the connection and now kind of feels, for lack of a better word, depressed or, or missing it. Oh, <laughs> you easily find a burlap bag though to kind of uh, to. Are you just shoving it in the bag? Going to wrap it up? Is it going to be arm shaped by the time you're done? I'll just hold the arm up and let other people do like the whole bundling. You putting a bow I mean, on it? I mean, yeah, we can just wrap it. I like, put it in a bag and wrap that up, and then put it in another bag. That way it won't stink so much. Okay. Um, who's carrying it? I will. Okay. Uh, as you travel along with it, you do get the sense of it moving slightly. It's a little bit unnerving. You know what it is, but even then, this this mo this hand is trying to move a little bit and trying to continue forward. Um, it's also pretty Can I large. feel which space trying to continue? Um, you can make an insight check to try to figure out if it's trying to go in a particular direction or if it's just moving. Wow, I'm rolling shit today. <laughs> but no, 14 you're total. A, you're still got a 14. Yeah. Um, you're not entirely certain. You have a feeling that because it's held up, it doesn't really know what direction is what. Um, so it's not that the arm itself is pulling, but the, the fingers are kind of moving to try to grasp on to something to move. Um, you don't, you're not sure if it knows what direction it's facing, but it is trying to move a little bit. Not so much now, though. It's diminished quite a bit since it was wrapped up. You get outside, and the world is almost disturbingly normal. A normal day is happening. People are going about their business. The sailors and fishermen have already gone out to sea for the, for the day to collect their bounty. The uh, folks are, are, are waking up, beginning to shop, and beginning to engage with the, uh, the uh, ongoing carnival that's all around you. It's a little bit weird because you kind of get this sense of the undercurrent that no one notices, which might be something you've seen for a while. As you proceed uh, uh, following Annie's direction down towards the dock, remember, it's a fairly large uh, city to walk in. Silas, I'll have you make another perception check. Nice. 
Natural 20. Hey. Nice. As Not you're that that matters, in. but 24. Well, it, 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 it's a good roll. It's, that matters entirely. As you're moving along and, and kind of following Annie's path, you do notice that the, there is a drift in the distance, or in the direction, rather, between where this thing is, presumably, and where you're traveling. They will diverge. Um, you're not sure if they're going to how much they're going to converge again, but it, the path that Annie has chosen for you, while faster, will not take you directly to it. I don't know if that influences your I'll, choice at all. I'll point that out to Annie that it seems to be off this way. Okay. Well, with that information, I'll modify my path with that okay. information. And literally, I imagine Silas is standing there and kind of, you can see the, the town is a little bit higher and that it flows down into the bay and kind of holding an arm out it's somewhere off in that direction. And you're kind of traveling off in this direction. What was it? Okay. Recalibrate. <laughs> <laughs> Recalculating. Recalculating. Plotting new course. Please <laughs> turn around. <laughs> Please turn around. <laughs> Um, sorry, what did you roll? Oh, roll to recalibrate? Yeah. Uh, 13. 13? Okay. There's no direct route to where he's pointing. He's kind of pointing towards the center part of the, of, of, uh, or sorry, one end of the docks. And you can't, it's kind of, you can't get there from here. You have to go a little bit of a circuitous route to get there. And in fact, as you're traveling along, you realize, oh crap. They're unloading a particular ship today. This part of the dock is going to be completely blocked off for most of the day as they unload. So you end up having to reroute a little bit. It takes you a little longer than, than you originally had hoped. Um, but now you find yourselves in front of what looks like a, a line of docks. Um, Andy, you're familiar um, kind of from your briefings that these are often rented out by, by uh, uh, merchants who are bringing uh, their stuff in either from the sea, holding it here until a caravan can arrange to bring it over the land, or the opposite direction. A caravan will come in, drop off goods. Sometimes they'll drop off multiple caravans of goods before a ship actually ships out. So they're, they're well-known and rented for the most time, uh, most part. Uh, but they all look roughly the same. And there's about six of them right in a row. Silas, make another perception check as you get closer. And again, you can see kind of quite a bit of, of uh, traffic here. That one ship is unloading. Um, looks like it's uh, unloading uh, bolts of cloth and barrels of who knows what. Ten. Ten? Yeah, it's somewhere in these six buildings, but you're not quite sure which one. It's hard to get any sort of angle. It's not far, though. That part you're fairly certain of. With these uh, six buildings, they all open up on one side to the actual dock itself. And the back end actually opens up to uh, solid land. Uh, as the tide comes in, it actually will overflow the back end of these, meaning they only have a limited period of time. But it's easier sometimes to load from the back than it is to load off of the dock directly. Um, it also means kind of first in, first out. If they load in from the dock... The, it'll load all the way to the back of the building, and that will be the first stuff to leave on the caravan if they can unload on the other side. Um, Silas is trained in navigation tools. Would he be able to use that to try to triangulate by going from first from one end of the structure and then to the other end of the structure and trying to see how the, the angle differed? Do you actually have navigation tools? Yep. Uh, he is trained yeah, in them. That would be something you can do. You can take a couple of different readings. The readings are vague, so I will say yeah. it's made a disadvantage, but you can roll with your your uh, your um, uh, proficiency. 19 with disadvantage. Nice. nice. Um, yeah, so you kind of move back and forth, probably with... Uh, a, 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 well, what, you can describe it. What does it look like when, when Silas is doing this? Well, he's trying to stay somewhat concealed and inobvious, but he'll tell the others that he's he's going to try to tri to triangulate the position, and then he'll basically sort of meander from one end of them to the other, uh, 
probably with his eyes partly closed like he's listening and he's not actually listening he's really just feeling for the change in direction um I can imagine too that you're kind of taking quietly. Uh, uh, stiff-legged steps to get a precise measurement along at least one of the the lines that you can get. You know, you can do the calculations basically at that point. He is making sure to go in a very straight line. Okay. Uh, in fact, he'd ask uh, at least one of them to to just stand in a specific spot, and then he would just move directly away from them All right. and use them as a measuring point. After this calibration, you're fairly certain you know that it's one of these three you've narrowed it down to. Uh, three side by each. Otherwise, they look identical. The, 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 the distance is about the same. You're not sure exactly why, uh, but it's not a strong sense. It's not a very pinpointed sense. Yep. So you, you're fairly certain you've narrowed it down, however. I'll wander back to them and just say it's definitely one of those three. Uh, All right. We may want to just investigate normally to see if we can find any evidence of rats. We can just walk by and I or... can hold the back of the hand so it doesn't grab me and see if there's any extra motion in front of a specific building. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can just, just imagine. Just hold of... the hand up and ask it to point. Yeah, you kind of hold the, hold the arm under your arm, and then with your two hands, you're walking along the third or her hand, just kind of <laughs> wayfinding, I suppose. Uh, all right. Uh, they, they are, all three of them, wooden constructions. You can see fairly clearly that they're all uh, locked up. Um, fairly sturdy locks. Um, Annie, you're familiar that, you know, there is a fair amount of thievery that comes down here, so they tend to be pretty careful in their... In their, uh, their uh, uh, their protection and the security they have. They do have small vent holes towards the top, for example, but that's about the only, they don't have windows in them, for example. Um, okay, uh, Medric, um, and if anybody can figure out a way to assist um, the arm of Dolver, you're welcome to try that. Otherwise, Medric will have you make a, uh, a disadvantage roll with a plus three. But if there's anybody who feels they can help this this effort, um, I don't know if this will help. But Silas will get uh, Medric to quietly say the the I mean what he wants the arm to do, and then Silas will telepathically send that to the arm. No right, idea if the arm could even sense it, but right. and I will also cast uh, guidance on myself. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I'll say that it's no longer at disadvantage, just a straight roll with your guidance and with the plus three. 18 plus okay. the guidance is... Well, it's at least a 19. That's pretty good. That's a 20, dirty 20. 20. So as you're walking by and trying to figure out if there's anything else you can determine... Um, I don't know, Annie, if you're investigating as well, trying to figure out any other clues or, or trying to, to look around. But I kind of imagine all three of you are kind of like, which one of these is it? Um, and it's no, hard because, casual. yeah, I mean, the, the, <laughs> they all look kind of scuffed up. They all look kind of they're in well regular use. There's nothing particularly noticeable about them unless, and you can't, unless you take a closer look, which would be a little bit suspicious, although Annie has... Uh, a recognizable uh, uh, position with the with the law, but would have to exploit that. But as you're as you're moving around and you kind of uh, have a sense of the arm now barely moving, um, you get the sense of it kind of uh, lose running out of any any residual energy or residual connection it had. Um, but it's running it, out it, of juice. It's it, wow. in, in fact, when you pick it up, you notice that the back of the bag is kind of soggy. Uh, it's Gross. still leaking whatever fluids it had that was maintaining it. Uh, literally running out of juice in this particular case. But as you're holding it up and as you kind of, as Silas mentally whispers to it, and as you, you call upon the the guidance of Ignis to try to, to give you a sense of what's happening here, you do get a sense of the knuckles, the two main knuckles on the hand kind of extending ever so slightly in front of one of the buildings. If this thing has some sort of sense it's using, it's pointed you to one of those three buildings. And that you can take as confirmation as much as it might be a, a, a 
true or or at least an indication the arm's dying slowly but i felt motion pointing towards that one and i'll point out the one that it was pointing at or that it moved towards when annie noticed the thieves can't written on the the marigold's two buildings did she say anything to us no she okay. probably wouldn't have um i, I would have well, said that i don't think that it was anything to do with any local unsavory activity or, uh, or organized mm, mischief. Uh, Annie, make a perception check. Uh, that is uh, 13. 13? All right. As the as magic is kind of hovering in front of this one building, uh, you look at it and you do notice there is some scratching around the outside of the building, uh, kind of along one of the edges uh, of the uh, sort of corner post of it. Take a closer look and it looks as though it was Thieves Can't written on the wall, but it's hard to interpret. It would take you a while to examine it to, to really see what it actually says. Uh, the first instinct is that it was there and somebody got rid of it. Somebody scratched out the scratches. I see. Hmm. Well, Silas looks at Annie because she's the official investigator. Um, what's next, boss? Well, I don't want to necessarily do anything that might cause them to hurt either of them we do need to get, get to them so which one are we thinking it is left mill or right i'll let her know whichever one dover was pointing at <laughs> yeah essentially it's the the right hand one if you're facing okay. the front of it and that's one that has the scratched out thing yep okay um Well, is there a back entrance or anything anywhere we can get in where vandalism is not required? There's no well, uh, there's no floor between the buildings, so there's no alleyway as such, but there is a small space. Um, you do know that many of these buildings do have back entrances for loading. Yeah, um, I do also know, however, that I do have permission to like this is an official investigation at this point. Nice. So this is the police. This is the police. <laughs> uh, so we do also have that, that that we can use if we want to go just the straight up. Yo, I've I've been informed that something unsavory might be happening. We're here to investigate. Let us in. Um. You do know that there are, uh, there's basically an, an, uh, an office where the, the rentalsman essentially for the area does do the business for these. That's where they have the logs for who's paid for them and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So there is, an, there is kind of an official down by the docks who does, takes care of that. Okay. Uh, I, I would say maybe an idea would to be going that way. Yeah. Okay. Um, just before we... Uh go anywhere i am going to cast water breathing on everybody just in case something dumps us into the bay that's a good idea Appreciate actually <laughs> I'm, I'm, i hope it's not required but it's a good idea Thanks. as you feel the strange shift uh in your in your throat indicating that the magic has taken hold so what are you going to do then go see the the rentalsman Sounds like we a good place to start. Working way first. Okay. Before we start breaking into places. Breaking into places. All right. Take a mental note of where the building is because they're largely indistinguishable from all the others. 
And if you'd had to uh, come down here and look through them all, there's you know, probably a hundred of these buildings. So uh, it would have taken forever. Actually, Silas is going to go find an alleyway that he can watch the building and he'll keep an eye on it while they go talk to the, the it's dude. It's literally the front end opens up to the dock. The back end opens up to the, uh, to the land and between there is no, there is no alleyway. There's no floor. Uh, literally it is open to the water, uh, in between the, the buildings are open up to the ground. Um, so there's not really an alleyway you can perch at. Mm-hmm. You could then go he'll further. Go, uh, he'll go down a couple of, uh, buildings and have a, uh, rest sitting against, uh, one of the dock pilings. Okay. Gonna keep Pull his hat down building. low and just, yeah. Pretend you're a hobo. He's gonna, he's gonna look like some random fisherman. All right, all right. Um, let's call that a uh, call it a performance check. To pretend you are a fisherman, it's not really deception just yet. Okay, you're totally a fisherman, absolutely in every way. You no played fact. fishermen in, in stories before, yeah. and fishermen slouch kind of like this, and they totally wear their hat at a different angle. And as Annie and Medrick, uh, I guess the both of you are walking away to the the office. Uh, yeah, you look yeah. back to see Silas kind of very jauntily standing, uh, looking like he's trying to kind of lean on the pier uh, casually, but it looks very not casual. Keep in mind, he's lived around fishermen all of his life. <laughs> It's kind of one of those weird things. It looks like he's having a stroke. <laughs> well, yeah. He, and, uh, he's, he's just sitting down with his, his back against one of the dock pilings. Yeah. Um, but not quite as, as casual as you met, we might have hoped. Uh, Annie and Medrick, it's not too far to make it to the rent, rentalsman's office. You can see that they're, probably the captain or the quartermaster of the ship which is unloading uh, is arguing with the rentalsman right now. Something about, you know, rates have changed. Uh, and the, the rentalsman, uh, it is a, uh, a, uh, a dwarven, uh, man is, uh, just kind of, uh, cheerfully telling him that, uh, I, the, the rates have changed significantly now that many of the buildings are full with this whole retinue that's come to town. Nothing I can do about it, I'm afraid. Um, and the, the cap, the quartermaster or captain, what, whoever he is, uh, just sort of walks away in a huff. I'll be back with the rest then. Uh, and you see the the very pleased with himself a dwarf uh, sitting there. Good morning. Hi, is a good morning. What can I do for you? Um, I'm here on business uh, for the the guard here. Um, we've been advised that there is something unsavory happening, uh, and that one of the buildings that's under your jurisdiction. Uh, might be involved, and we need access to it. I had nothing to do with it. We're not saying that you do. We're saying that the person who's renting it does. Oh, well. I, I We make no claims as to what they're using the buildings for. That's very well known. That's up to them yep. and their conscience. Yep, we, we just need whole, access to the building. We have a whole contract they got to sign saying they, they may make sure that we're not liable for anything that's there. Security is their own protection as well, so... You need in. You need to get in the building. Yep. Oh well. Um, he kind of looks around. I might have a crowbar here. <laughs> we basically I mean, don't we want break. to be held li- liable for breaking into it without trying to go through the person owning the building. Well, okay. Um, sure. Then he kind of looks around. All right, um, give me a minute. And he kind of closes up the little window in front, hangs up a little sign back in back in an hour. Which you, you know, as you as he's walking along with you, you can see that that captain or quartermaster is coming back and just taking a look at the fact that the shed the shed is closed and probably <laughs> swearing. You can't really hear much at this point. Carried away by the wind, probably gracefully. Uh, whatever he said, though, probably would have turned uh, an honest person's uh, hair white. Uh, but the dock master um, kind of trundles along with you, um, uh, walks, uh, you lead him to the appropriate building. Um, Silas, you can see they've come back with this uh, older looking dwarf. He's a little bit um, rounder, 
<laughs> there perhaps uh, maybe uh, too many years of sitting comfortably in the in the chair. Uh, and he has a, a, a big, thick, leather-bound book with him. Uh, and he, uh, when you indicate the building, uh, he, uh, let's see, uh, goes through uh, his book. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Uh, says here, uh, it's one Gary Sprocket. Don't remember that one in particular. Probably was happening when I was off shift. Looks like it's been rented for ah months and months now. You sure this is the one? I mean, I'd hate to authorize this and find out that you guys have just decided to break down a building for fun. I mean, we're well, fairly certain. We break things for fun. Yeah, all right, and he puts a. A kind of dramatic check mark in some column in the book that he has there. Uh, walks over to the uh, to the building, uh, knocks on the door, waits for a few seconds. The front of the building too has a couple of big double doors, uh, one mm -hmm. smaller door inset into the large double doors. Plus, there's a door around on the end of it as well, presumably leading to an office or something. He knocks on all of them after waiting a few seconds, hearing nothing. Uh, and then he reaches into a pocket and uh, on the front of the big doors uh, just takes a, a piece of red chalk and scrawls a large X across it. All right, have at it. Um, on one of the smaller doors, is there an actual lock or is it just like all bars? Um, from, what, from what you can see, it does look like there is a, a, a well, there's a padlock on the outside of the door for the mm -hmm. main big doors. Um, for the little door, it doesn't look like there's a padlock, but there is a keyhole. Um, and they cool. are, when you try them, they are locked. Cool, first things first, I'll, before I break anything, I'll try to pick the lock itself. Okay. The uh, dock master's just sort of standing back and kind of watching, and you can see now the little bit of a crowd is starting to accumulate. They're kind of wondering what's going on, and people are pointing at the big red X, and there's some, some murmurs of, oh no. Oh, they got in trouble. Wonder what's in there. Supposed to be paying attention to it? Probably not. That sort of conversation in the background. Uh, as you yeah. go up to the which which of the doors the 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 one that's inset or the non inset one? Um, you said that one of them was probably directly to the office. Yeah, the non inset one off to the right. Uh, I'll, I'll do that one. Okay. Oh, that's a twenty-four. The lock. Okay. Don't Sounds want to damage good. the doors if I don't need to. All right. Um, you feel resistance as you're trying to unlock the door. Um, it's not a simple lock. Not certainly a simple lock that should have been in a building like this. Uh, but with satisfaction, you hear not one chunk, but in fact, ka chunk, ka chunk, ka chunk, and a heavy sort of thud. But it does feel like the lock is unlocked now. The door open. Okay. Um, why you thought it might have opened up into an office, it looks as though it does not. Uh, it looks as though uh, it, it uh, may have been an office, but there are no walls on the inside. And you can see uh, crates uh, piled up uh, in the sort of the center of the room. Uh, what I'm going to do, we're, we're going to have to restart the call here in a minute or two anyway. But what I will do is I will switch you guys over to a map. Um, I will say that I do not have uh, the, um, let me just check here to see if I have too many screens, too many mice. Okay, I do not have, uh, okay, I get to reveal certain things here. So, let's see if I can do this. You guys should see yourselves. Yep. Uh, and I realized I didn't drop my POV character uh, on there. All right. Pardon me as I try to find out where my POV character ended up. 
Ended up on the dynamic lighting level. <laughs> or sort of did. There we go. Wait, no. Uh, uh, apologies. There we go. Layer object. So you'll see the floating eye. Um, pay no attention to it. It's simply... Uh, let's see if that works. I don't see it. Uh, hopefully I got it in the right area. There's, uh, okay, now I see it. It's just not illuminating anything. It shouldn't illuminate anything, but it should be okay. able to see. Uh, I just realized that it may or may not. Oh, I forgot how to do this. One second. Well, you know what? While I figure this out... <laughs> And um, while I go grab a hoodie, because this room is freaking cold. <laughs> um, why don't we... We'll end the call. We'll come back after I figure this out. So it should be no more than five minutes. Uh, and then we will be able to uh, to continue. Sounds good, everyone? Yep. Okay. I'll be back in five. Bye. And we're back. So where we had left off, uh, Annie, in fact, I will just move you to the appropriate spot so you know where you are. Uh, Annie had just unlocked one of the doors and discovered, to some surprise perhaps, that the door's mechanical lock was much more than it appeared to be. For those of you who are wondering, if you haven't seen this particular setup before, uh, the big eyeball is my POV character to try to allow this to be uh, shown properly. We'll see how well that works. Um, they've recently changed some things in Roll20 to, uh, to make it easier. That's what these little um, torches are as in well. Theory. So. In theory, in theory, this will work better. <laughs> sure. Um, you can, you can, uh, you know now that the door is unlocked. What do you do next? Um, I'm expecting it to be dark in there, so I will put on my my dark goggles. But also, I have ten feet of blind sight, so I'm not too worried. Okay. Annie puts um, on her goggles. Anyone else preparing? Um, shield is out. Yeah, I have my shield Hammer up. In hand. Uh, also, I forgot to uh, pick one, but when I hex something, I hex one of its uh, stats. Uh, I'll pick strength because that's the only one that normally comes up. So the rat has a disadvantage on strength checks, but not attacks. Okay. I'll check for traps just because that door was quite locked. Okay. That would be a, is it a thieves' tools check or a perception check? I always forget. Investigation, but that's a natural 20, so 21. Okay. okay. Perhaps unsurprisingly, with a door which is uh, more than what you expect, not only was the lock heavier, but it does look as though there were some sort of spring traps associated with this. Uh, as you kind of look around the door, you can kind of see where the door jam has been reinforced. Um, you mm -hmm. kind of pop open the door ever so slightly and you can see there's a, a couple of inches uh, in which there are what look like sharpened cogs all up and down the side of the door. Looks like it has been uh, uh, turned off by the successful unlocking of the door. Does not seem cool. to be ready, but it is spring-loaded and could trick it, tri trigger at any moment. Hopefully there's no other triggers for it. Cool. Well, I will let people know to be careful. Uh, and push the door open and hope that nothing goes off. Okay. You give the door a shove and nothing happens. Uh, let's see if you can see now. I want to re re reveal <laughs> reveal the permanent darkness. It seems like some sort of heavy metal phrase. <laughs> um can you see now? <laughs> A quarter um, of light in front of you. For whatever reason, I can't see it. I, I can see exactly what you see, in, like on the shared screen there. Okay. Yeah, same. Uh, we'll see if... Oh, hey, stop moving my are eyeball we supposed around. To be, are <laughs> we supposed to be able to move it? Well, it's it's accessible to all players so that my, okay. my other character can, can look at it, but... Um, I was trying to click it at the time, and it moved away, and I thought, that's a bad omen. <laughs> um, oh, no. My, my, my POV character has become alive. This is not good. Ah. Uh, okay. 
Let's see if I need to do it from here. I also don't have any dark vision, so if there's no, like, on my character, like, token itself, right? Oh, right. Um, I can do something about that. So I currently have 60 feet of dark vision plus 10 feet of uh, blind sight. Okay. What I will do is I will give you, if I would type in the right screen, which is difficult, too many keyboards. So you have night vision now which means you probably can see quite a bit. I, as I said, I didn't put the dynamic lighting on in this particular space. In fact, I, I might even just turn off dynamic lighting. Um, but um, yeah. you are somewhat startled, however, as just off and up. You can see to your left, there are um, what look like stairways going to a second level of this particular one. Mm -hmm. You can also see there are a number of crates that have been piled up across the sides. And, and in particular, as you look through you see there are um, crates that have been sort of crates and barrels that have been kind of piled into almost what looks like an interior wall, like it's covering mm -hmm. or surrounding something. Um, but as you kind of uh, look around, you see a little bit of movement out of your eye. And so all of this, I can't see over. This is piled up, right? Right. You can kind of see a little bit through cracks in there. So you can make out that there are things there, but not really the specifics about them. I don't see if I can cool. move the POV character. See if that makes any difference. It does. I think not. your POV character does not have vision. I, I yeah I. Okay. Oh, there it is. No, I I move the torches, <laughs> so I will move the torches <laughs> and see how that works. It's a learning curve, folks. It's a learning curve. Okay, but as you as you kind of step through the door, nothing clinks underfoot. Uh, although the wood is a little springy, uh, it creaks slightly. Um, you have a feeling that it would be difficult to, to sneak around in here because of that. But up on top of the uh, uppermost steps, just before it, uh, they vanish into the upper floor itself, uh, you catch a little bit of movement. And you see kind of turning its head towards you what looks like an owl. I see. And for those who uh, don't realize, that's what this thing is. I will move in and tell people to be careful. Okay. Its head Before... kind of swivels and, and pays attention to you. You can make a perception check. Twenty. Twenty? Thirty. 20. Um, it moved very, very smoothly. And as it turns, it moves unnaturally so. Um, but it kind of jitters a couple of steps along the way as though it's turning in perfectly around. Um, and you can see it kind of stretching its its wings a little bit, and there's a little bit of a hitch in the movement as well. As you realize, this is not a natural owl. This does look to be made of some sort of metal covered with feathers. I see. Fun, fun. So what are the I'll, rest I'll of you tell, doing? I'll tell them to be careful of the owl mm -hmm. to the left. Beware Before the, the rest of us get in there, I'm going to cast uh, Pass Without Trace from the staff. Okay. All of you feel the the uh, extension uh, almost of a fog cloud, which drifts over you. You're aware of its dimensions, uh, and you're aware of its source, but it seems more powerful than you, you have seen before. And then uh, I'll head in. Okay. Um, now remember, if if there's any darkness in here, I can see through it perfectly. If there's dim lights, if it's within sixty feet, I can see through it perfectly. Basically, within about twenty feet of the door, which is open, letting light in, that would be dim light. The rest is completely uh, darkness at this point. Yeah. Um, you have the, the goggles. That's why you get the night vision, right, uh, Annie? Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, and, of course, uh, Medrick, you glow slightly. Yeah. And kind of, if you're within uh, 20 feet of uh, Silas, Silas, you will not have your complete darkness. So he is like a walking torch, uh, mm -hmm. making it actually harder for you to see, really enough. Uh, and, yep. again, you see well, the, the box. Be close to me anyways. Yeah. I like the character with the fog lights. Um, 
as you move inward, again, you can see that the stacked barrels and boxes are, are kind of producing a, 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 an inner wall. It's imperfect. Um, it's almost as though it was done perhaps uh, hastily or perhaps um, without really caring where the boxes go. They're not as perfectly lined up as it might be indicating from the map themselves. Um, and as uh, Medric, you step in, um, there is a, a, a loud metallic hooting sound that emerges from this owl, um, which sort of reverberates throughout this building and it spreads its wings and flies uh, up uh, out of well, vision. There's the alarm system. And you don't see it anymore. It would seem so. Um, let's move. Uh, I'll put the arm of by the stairs, because I figured, like, I, I can't really pull my sword and my uh, hammer and shield out while I'm carrying that huge arm. <laughs> okay. You can kind Is of park the arm on the stairs. Uh, it it does move a little bit after you've after you've kind of dropped it, but its movements are getting so slight now. Um, you noticed its movement more before because you were literally holding on to it. Now it would be almost indistinguishable from, you know, just a, a, a pile of cloth at this point. Okay. But I'll leave it there, and like, and having seen that, it's not moving up, like hardly at all. I'll, I'll assume it's fairly safe for it to be here when we get back. Who knows? Because I do, I do plan to pick it back up once we exit the warehouse. Um, who knows? It's still there now. Okay. Um. So. Oh. I'm intrigued by what's in the middle of here. Oh. Uh, but, but what's in here? Uh, but also, that owl went upstairs and made a lot of noise. Let's go this way. Okay. Uh, make a perception check. Four. Four? Okay. Oh, no. um, you hear the sound of the owl kind of Maybe touching down every once in a while on the second floor, or maybe not. It's hard to tell. Fine. We're kind of we're not doing initiative as, as such, but I do kind of want to do a round from everybody so that people don't get lost. If you don't have anything to do at the moment, you can just say go ahead and pass. Yeah, I'll uh, follow any. Move. Okay. And do I also do a perception check? Uh, not anymore. Oh crap! Okay. I'll follow any anyway. Okay. While being very alert. Silas, do you do anything? Um, Silas will move a bit down this way. Okay. I'll move a torch for Silas. Oop. Grab the right torch. Does it look like there's a lower point in this wall? In the the made up wall of of, uh, of boxes and barrels, yeah, not from where you are. No, it looks actually okay. like it's been reinforced from this particular direction. Um, Silas, you can go ahead and make a perception check. No, nope. sorry, that's performance. <laughs> you pretend go. you can see something, and everybody believes 16. it. Sixteen. Uh, okay. You can actually make out a, a little bit of movement inside uh, coming from beyond. And you can kind of peer a little bit through the barrels now that uh, uh, Medric has moved a little further away. It's actually easier for you to see. Uh, and you can kind of make out that there is a table full of looks like papers and a, and a, and a book and some sort of mechanical instruments. Um, you can also see an, an opposite table, which seems to be filled with uh, what looks like different configurations of crystals, some of them broken, some of them whole, uh, and kind of flitting back and forth. There does seem to be some uh, shape, uh, short, but with long gangly legs. I, I should say, say it's not short. It stands about four feet tall, but it's only about two feet of, or one and a half, two feet of, of being. Really long spindly legs below it and really long spindly arms. Uh, and it appears to be kind of pacing back and forth. Uh, you also catch the the sort of mechanical sound uh, emanating from it. And for you, that's what you see there. 
Um, Annie and Medrick are unaware of this, and Silas, you'd have to call out to let them know. Yeah, he's going to head back and say it into their heads. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, telepathy would be the other option, although you couldn't see them behind, beyond the barrels. Now you can. What do you relate to them? Uh, well, I tell them that there. it looks like there's a little lab in the middle and some sort of mechanical being in there. Tiny body, long, thin arms and legs. This would look easily breakable. I'll, resp I'll respond back telepathically. I don't if know. I can. Maybe. You're on mute. Or you're like really whispering telepathically. <laughs> Very much whispering. Um, did you did you see? Uh, can, can you tell if there's any an, an easier way into the circle? I couldn't see a way on my side, but there might be on the other side if, you, if we head further in. I will move further in then. I'll let you guys go first because I think I'm affecting your eyesight, Silas. And if anything tries to sneak up on on us, I'll stop them. Okay, um, Annie, you can make a uh, perception check. We're just gonna move it around. Are you guys trying to be quiet? Yes, because we have passed mm -hmm. without a trace. Then I will yeah. need a, a stealth roll from each of you. Okay, remember the plus 10. Yep. Sixteen. Nice. Twenty-four. Twenty-nine. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not even going to bother rolling. That's that's pretty good. Uh, as you start sneaking around in the darkness and uh, the sounds. Earlier that you heard uh, any of the of the groaning of the floor are con entirely muffled by this this uh, delightful shadow that you have following along with you. Um, your perception check, uh, Annie, was three. Three. Okay. You can't quite make out any detail. Um, if if. Um, Silas hadn't told you, you wouldn't have noticed any move, movement inside. But the fact that he told you about it, you kind of move and move back across one of the cracks between some of the some of the, the boxes, uh, and uh, uh, you you think you saw something move, but it also didn't move by much. If it did move from this mm -hmm. side, you can also tell that there are only a few boxes. So whatever it was was piled towards the front, and now there's mm -hmm. fewer boxes here. Not as not really any openings yet. Uh, no, no real gaps more than a couple of inches, but you can see at least that the the uh, walls are thinner, if you will. The made up walls are are thinner, fewer boxes between you and the center. I am going to notch an arrow. Okay. That was Annie and moving around. Silas moved around. What's Medrick doing? I move. I'm following them, but not so close that I'm affecting Silas's vision. Okay. And I'm making sure nobody's sneaking up on us. Okay. I'm also looking like to the floor and to the ceiling because I know there's like small creatures and flying creatures. Okay, make a perception check. Fuck's sakes. That's a natural one, so a total of six. Yeah, you're you're There's still. Quite... Is that a floating eyeball? What, what the hell is that? <laughs> you somehow break the universe and see the GM peering in and going, "Wait, he can't see me! Look away! Look away!" <laughs> and you're momentarily blinded. Um. Uh, Annie and uh, and Silas, um, you stand there for a second or two, and now when you kind of get a chance to 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 move quietly and be there, um, you do kind of realize there is this strange thing moving back and forth. Uh, it is very, very boxy in the center. And it, it has these long, as I said, very long, spindly, metallic limbs, which is hard to determine without any light, but they see, it seems to be cold uh, from the way your perspectives move. For you, Silas, you're tasting a sort of uh, uh, 
oily slick in the air. Uh, and every time it moves, that gets released a little bit more. Um, you also kind of hear what sounds like voice, but you can't make out any details from where you are. Um, uh, so looking through, like, what do I see? Because he, I, unless there's light in there, he sees it perfectly. Um, true, but some things don't, like shine doesn't come up unless you have light, for example. Um, well, yeah, it's a magical ability that just lets him see in darkness as though it was perfectly sunlit. Right. Um, yeah, that's a weird one to try to interpret. Okay. It's, a, it's an extraordinarily weird one, and they've ruled it that, <laughs> yes, it's just supposed to be that weird. Sure, yeah. Um, I'm just kind of imagining, like, is there glint off of metal if there's no light to generate glint? <laughs> um, no, nope, but he would to, probably To me, it's like a black it and white illustration. He would probably see it as a perfectly, like, a soft, white, light-diffused area or something. Okay. Um, well, first of all, uh, take a perception check to see what okay. you see in detail as you kind of, I'm assuming you're kind of moving up to the, to the wood so you can peer between the, the little sli uh, slits that are there. Yeah. It's difficult to Natural see much one. because, oh, oh my God. It's, it's difficult to see much just because the, 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 the boxes are close enough together. You're really only getting this very narrow vision. And unless you move between boxes, all you're getting is whatever that vision can see. So from yeah. say that first one, uh, you do see whatever this creature is kind of poking and prodding at different things that are on the on the desk uh, and kind of turning them around. Uh, looks like it's looking up uh, uh, some sort of paper instructions flipping through. And you actually notice, uh, actually you don't notice uh, anything more than that. Um, when you kind of probably move a little bit over so you can see between uh, two other ones, all you're seeing is there is indeed a full desk there a pile of what looks like scrap metal, maybe, or it could be wood from this angle. It might be glass. It's really hard to make any details. Uh, How tall is this barrel? Uh, it's a stack of barrels, so it's basically um, three barrels tall. You can imagine that all of them are three, so about 15 feet tall, almost reaching to the floor of this particular, uh, uh, or almost reaching rather to the ceiling of this particular floor. Okay. Um, as you're standing there, you do see the, the object, or the, sorry, object. Well, object, I'll objectify them. Uh, the thing move out of your vision and kind of cross back over to the other side. It's taking a lot of self-control to not just push the... <laughs> Right, if you want to go ahead. Uh, I, I, I just don't think, I think that'll make a lot of noise. It can't be louder than what the owl was earlier. Well, let's go further back then, I guess. Okay. Are you once again going to take a, a look through? Sure. What were you saying, Annie? Basically looking for the easiest point of entry. Okay. Um, Annie and Silas both make perception checks again. Eight. Four again. Wow. We're, we're awfully not perceptive wow. today. I, I, I mean, you guys I aren't the best. Or everybody was rolling 20s back to back. <laughs> I mean, you guys aren't Four the best at perception check. to start with. I, I will admit that your perception scores are a little bit low, but this is exceptional. Um, this is I, difficult. I, I, mm. I have rolled a two, a three, or a three, a two, and a three. <laughs> Okay. I have, plus, yep. I have the perception and I still just roll shitty. <laughs> it That's happens. random number generators. It, it, it totally happens. It's just, it's kind of, it's kind of weird. All right. Um, uh, so, uh, did you roll a perception check, uh, Medric, as well? Earlier, yeah, I got a one. <laughs> okay. And I saw the magical eye. Or did I? Was oh, I right, right. Possibly. Well, you moved into a new spot. You can make a new roll. Um, okay. As for uh, uh, Annie, um, you can see a oh little bit Oh my god, more. are you shitting me? <laughs> <laughs> we see nothing. Okay, well, you know, it's, it's difficult. Um, <laughs> for you, Annie, you do see kind of the... A little bit around this barrel that's that's here, but it's... You're not sure if there's anything in any of these boxes or barrels, by the way. 
Um, but the, the one thing that you kind of realize as you're moving around is you're not really hearing this thing move around. And you have a feeling that maybe the boxes and barrels are really there just to dampen sound. Maybe that's all they're there for. And the fact that they happen to block your vision is just completely accidental. Um, for you, Silas, you look through the barrels or look through the boxes and you see more boxes. Uh, they're piled up too closely there and you can't really see anything beyond them. Um, yeah. He's just going to wander forward. Okay. All right. I got to move your your torch. Yeah, uh, I can see. I, I, Although I the can't, torch is I, further, but I can't show the uh, <laughs> can't show the the people at home. I wonder if I can. Huh? I can make that a ten foot torch. I can actually modify the torches values. Thank you for adding torches, mm. roll twenty. I really appreciate that. It's a simple little light light thing, which makes a heck of a difference. Oh, I almost yeah, gave this torch two hundred and ten feet of light. That's a bright torch. All right. Um, yep. You see that the, the it seems like the ring of of boxes goes all the way around. You can see that there's additional stairs at the back as well, that can go up. Um, you also see that there's a large set of double doors. So there was in fact a a loading um, door at the back as well. Okay, I'll just come back and uh, whisper that in their heads. It's like, find a back exit, stairs up. Do you want to deal with this thing first, or? You hear or a uh, a kind of clang, clang, clang. As something metallic was maybe dropped. Where? Like somewhere stretch. inside all of that. You guys have terrible perception rolls. I can't give you any more details than that. But you hear it because it's pretty bloody obvious. Well, we might as well... Medric, can you push some of these? Pu push some push of the these. Over. To be able to get inside. No, At push this point. The, over. the big stack of barrels goes falling down. Okay, give me a strength check. As you discover, 13? they are indeed full. Uh, 13? Yeah. Oh, jeez, they're filled with gravel or something, maybe water? These are heavy. Um, make a stealth check, however, a new stealth check. Uh, at disadvantage. But you still get plus 10. So 13 and 15, so that's a so 13. 20, 23, yeah. Nope. Doesn't seem to be noticed. No, that's that's with the plus ten, I think. Yeah, that's with the plus ten. Oh, okay. Thirteen is with the plus ten. <laughs> yeah, that's actually within. I'm, I'm range rolling they could spectacularly roll. shitty today. That, that's within something they could roll. Let's see what happens when they try to roll that. Uh, wow, that's terrible. A natural twenty. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, you do. I'll be right back. I'm more drink. <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to hit initiative soon, I think. But uh, you do uh, hear a a startled. Uh, voice in sort of flat metallic common uh, that says, oh my, uh, <laughs> as uh, something seems to have noticed your attempt to knock over the barrels. Uh, and then you hear some frantic clanking and, and uh, some, some uh, sort of clack of uh, sort of metallic uh, twisting happening much more rapidly. And then there's a, another metallic sort of off-key chitter coming from somewhere behind uh, them as well. I will provide a like, crowbar. <laughs> you feel like you've been noticed? Well, now we're going to roll initiative. Uh, because now it comes down to a timing. Um, There's a 19 for initiative. Ah, right. oh, fuck, I forgot to select my character. That's all right. I, I got it here. I have to delete a couple of characters anyway. Because uh, it's been a 23. while. It still has Odak on this list. I don't know if you heard uh, any, uh, but the thing said, oh my, when it it noticed us, so it, it is sentient. We might be able to, to negotiate with it. Um, okay. Violently, if need be. No. Need to have that. Uh, oops. There. Okay. And that. there okay uh, 
Uh, Annie, you are up first. As you hear the sound of uh, the the oh my, the metallic uh, flat voiced oh my, the rapid uh, increase in uh, in sounds of of metal being turned over, cranked. You're not really sure what, uh, and you feel like some timing has has come to fore. Um, when I'm not in the turn order yet. Uh, you are. Oh, I I don't see. I only see me and it. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh. Uh, that's weird. Well, I'll just call them out as it goes. Uh, Annie, you're up front. Cool. Uh, so I will uh, object interaction hand uh, Medric a... Someday you're going to uh, have to have a mithril crowbar. It's just going to happen. It, it, it is. It's it's become its own character. Vorpal Crowbar. Uh, <laughs> we'll spend the money on that one. Um, so, yeah, I, I give Medric the Crowbar and I uh, re-notch my arrow ready to shoot at anything hostile. Okay. You're ready in a, an action to shoot if anything hostile. Uh, Medric, you're up next. You've got a uh, Crowbar. Oh, uh, and bonus yeah. action, I'll steady aim. Um, you I can't play. see anything to aim at right now? Okay. Uh, then I will give Medric advantage to, or Corporal gives him advantage. Um, I will. Yeah. I'll, I'll just hold my action then. Okay. Medric. If I cast Guidance on myself, is that a turn or no? Uh, it depends on if it's a bonus action or an action to do it. I think it's a bonus action to cast. Please check no, the spell. No, it's a regular action. Crap. Okay. If I'll it's a regular action, then that we would the guidance, would be your And I will grab the crowbar and now flip the barrels. All right. Vintage. 14 um, or... Yeah, that 14 is nice because there's another one. <laughs> so 17 uh, total. Easily enough, once you jam the crowbar underneath, it's a wooden floor, so you can get a nice good purchase. And sure enough, once you get that started to toppling, I can't draw it on the map. Mm -hmm. But, uh, well, I can't easily draw it on the map. So uh, just assume that, um, actually, I might be able to. Let's just try. Uh, sorry, I, I hate trying. I shouldn't try things. I'm going to try things. Do there, we'll just assume that barrel is gone. Okay. Uh, and, yes, crashes down in, actually crashes over um, the, uh, uh, we'll just put, put it down. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Meant to draw, not move the friggin' map. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we're going to actually say that there's a line of three barrels and it crashes into this table as well, smashing uh -oh. through the table and sending all those crystals probably uh, in shards uh, across the room. So th in moving through those three spaces would be considered difficult terrain. Curse flat. As it goes curse flat. But you are successful in opening it up. Uh, all and right. now, I will yep, go ahead. Move here. Okay. What do I see? Uh, you see this creature frantically working on a much larger, much thicker looking creature. Uh, it looks I'll, to be to a metallic it. statue and standing in front of you. Uh, I need to move some torches. Uh, does, like, I realize I already used my action, but uh, does, nope, they did not could I just, like, up. tackle it? <laughs> um, sorry, I got to make it show up here. Uh, there it is. Um, I think tackling would be an action. Damn it. Tackling would be an action, yeah. Mm. Uh, as you see it, and the, the, the creature that's standing beside you, a little bit shorter than you with its long spindly arms, is, is frantically cranking at the center of this thing. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, kind of the ha upper part of its head sort of twists. Its, its square, almost cube-like head twists. And you can see two uh, gems that are lit up that are kind of looking at you. As the mouth facing forward and utters another, oh my, not good, not good. So if I were to move my character here, like in its way, would it you cause can't. it? It, no. it takes up that space. Yeah. Um, it is massive. It's the, the statue that's in front of you stands taller than you. If I, if I get in its square, can I get in its way? Nope. Damn it. You can't normally occupy another square. Um, that's just a mechanics thing. In that case... Spiritual weapon. Whoosh. Okay. I have your spiritual weapon somewhere here. I just have to bring it to the fore. Where is it going to appear? Uh, right here. 
Okay. Ah, where is it? Uh, I don't have access to it yet. Yeah, there. there. Uh, can you move Thank it? I want to make sure if I have to check anything. Hmm? Can you move oh. the spiritual weapon so I don't have I can't, any? no. Okay, just a second. I will make sure you can. I copied it from another page and thought that maybe it would be available. Now can you move it? Yep. Okay. And now, it will swing. It, it can't be there because that's literally where another okay. box is. So, yeah. There's a little bit of space there. It can maneuver. Uh, bonus action, and it can attack right away. What are you attacking? Oh, my God. Nothing, I guess. Uh, yeah, it, it sort of like appears. I've never had like this. Like that's four ones in five turns. What the fuck is wrong with this? Roll twenty yes. is broken. You just I realize now, though, you're going to have a bunch of of nat twenties in a row, and it's going to be spectacular. So just, I hope just so. <laughs> banking on the universe uh, working out that way. Um, I just noticed that what for whatever reason your portrait is all messed up. Oh well, I will fix that another time. Uh, not yours. Sorry, I was talking about uh, Silas's uh, portrait okay. has decided to cut him off for whatever reason. All right. Sorry. Uh, distraction. Uh, yeah. You pull out the, the, you summon the spiritual weapon that you kind of like heave. Huh, oh, ah, ah, huh. box. Some, some of the weapon, the fury weapon appears. And when it goes to swing, it sort of backs into one of the boxes and kind of thump, 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 thump. Thling, thling. Probably not meant to do that. Uh, all right. Uh, that makes it now Silas's turn. You can hear a whole lot of commotion as you see that, uh, Medrick has, has, uh, Knocked over some barrels and made an entrance. Uh, keep in mind that this is a uh, difficult terrain if you're moving through it, which will be uh, double movement. Yeah, three, four, five. Okay. Uh, it's going to dip in. You can see once again this little this little creature trying to work on the larger one. Um, you can make out now, and I'll just put it on the map because you guys have come into the space. Um, you can see the. Uh, oops. I got the wrong one. Uh, shoot. You'll see something appear. It's not actually there. I am trying to maneuver something which is underneath it. Because layers. There we go. Uh, and that goes away. Uh, you can see that squashed rat. <laughs> Essentially, it's kind of kind of there, limping along, trying to trying to get beside uh, the other creature as well. Is that the one that has my curse on it? Yes. You can definitely okay. tell that now that you can see it. Um, I look over at the boxy thing with the really skinny limbs. Is mm -hmm. that obviously not a, a human, elf, dwarf, or whatever else I've encountered in town? Absolutely not. It is none of those things. It doesn't look flesh at all. It looks like a box, a metal box with, with metal limbs. I will point a finger at it and say, are you Clockwinder? Um, oh, interesting. Uh, once again, kind of this time, the, the eyes stay looking forward at whatever it's doing, but the lower half with the mouth kind of twists towards you. Um, uh, and the whole body kind of shifts almost as though it's giving a little head head uh, tilt. Uh, error, no. Clockwinder, designation, R, B, A, 4, 7, not Clockwinder, Clockwinder, Clockwinder. There's a sort of question that's in his voice, as it seems slightly confused by your question. Okay. Um. Well, as a bonus action, I'm going to move the hex from the rat to the big guy. That's okay. not moving, but that's just in case. Um. I guess it's an actual action um oh dang it now I forget his name rva four seven seven rva four seven what are you doing here um that'll be my turn <laughs> Hmm. I think that it continues to work at what it's doing, and uh, the answer is intruders. Can't let. Must not. Intruders. That's its uh, its mom its moment. 
Um, its turn. It seems to finish up what it's doing. Uh, as you see, uh, protector, protect. It sort of says to the thing. Uh, and then uh, it weirdly, you can see there's a statue uh, right there as well. It looks like the statue of, you're not sure what figure it is. It's some, it's some, looks like an elven man kind of holding his hand up as if in some sort of gesture of, of, uh, of command. Uh, and it, uh, RV, R, what is it, RBA47, uh, uh, actually seems to climb up and over it uh, and then sort of moves into uh, this corner here. However, uh, that will leave your area, Medric. You can make a uh, an, an attack of opportunity if you choose to. Can so I just try did. to trip it? Can you what, sorry? Can I try to trip it? Uh, not really. That's more of a, a, there's an actual fighter thing that allows people to be tripped, or you can do that as an action on your turn. This is more of just a quick reaction. Um, if you had held your action for an attack, I'd probably say you could do it, but. Yeah. No, I won't. I'll focus on the big guy instead. Okay. I mean, I feel like we can possibly reason with the thing. Maybe. Um, from where you're both standing, uh, uh, Silas and Medric, um, you can see that it kind of extends its arms down. You can see now there is some sort of symbol or construction on the floor, and it kind of starts to put its finger, its hands towards in that direction. Uh, it seems to be slightly lighting up. Annie, you do see this come from uh, come within your vision. You can attack it as a reaction because you did have a, tell, a held action if you wish. It is starting to glow. Uh, no, no. You just see it walk over, kind of climbing over, spider-like over the obstacle that was in its way, and then extend its hands down towards these the floor, which you can't see from there. So is it okay. the floor that's glowing now? Uh, the, there's there's symbols and what looks like crystals and other things which are look like they're responding to the proximity, but they aren't really doing much more than slightly glowing, which you can't see from from where Annie's uh, standing. Okay, but, but what I had understood was that the, the duder was glowing. Uh, no, no, he's not glowing okay. at all. And you can't see the other one, so you can't tell that it's starting to glow. Um, I will, or if he does anything that seems threatening. Okay, well, this is your reaction. This is your opportunity to potentially react to it moving into your site. If you don't, then you can hold that reaction for the rest of the turn until you turn again. Okay, but, well, what I had held was something, was first, it, if something threatening happened was what, okay, I, what okay. I held it So for. you, yeah, the reason I, mean, I ask is... My site isn't threatening. You don't think it's threatening, okay. Right. Yep. If it wanna... starts to, yeah, if it starts to do something, it okay. just moved. Right. I, I didn't so. want to. I didn't want to make the conclusion for you. I wanted you to say yeah. that Andy doesn't find this threatening. Okay, no problem. Um, Medric. Andy doesn't see the big statue. <laughs> Andy doesn't see the thing which is actually threatening, which is kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, however, uh, in front of you, Medric, you see the uh, the 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 what looks like a suit of armor almost, uh, but you can kind of see there are, are are spaces through it. You can also see that it doesn't look like it's. Uh, entirely solid. You can see rusty bits and pieces, but inside now you can see in the center of the chest and in the stomach, twisting and turning gears that start to to uh, to move and and jerk and whir. And now it makes a, a much louder kind of whirring sound. Um, Silas, you realize that what you had seen behind the boxes before was not more boxes, but in fact the back of this thing, uh, which has kind of a, a almost a almost a box like slats in front of it. Um, and uh, the uh, deep inside the eye sockets of this armor, uh, you can see a little slight yellowish glow forming uh, from small little gems that seem to be embedded within. Uh, and it uh, it turns its head jerkily, looking at, uh, in particular, Medric, uh, and uh, just simply intones in a, in a very uh, rough facsimile of a voice, Intruder, and steps forward to attack you. All right. It seems to be intent on on not really understanding um, anything beyond this. It knows it was summoned and ready to go. Uh, it makes one slam at you. 
21 to hit. Yep. Uh, eight bludgeoning damage. As this sort of solid, you kind of realize that while the the body of center part is kind of um, uh, has uh, holes and see through parts in it, um, its its gauntlets have been filled possibly with heavy rocks or metal or something. They felt like a very solid hit, uh, and it kind of bashes at you with one one fist and then leans back and bashes at you with the other. Eighteen to hit. Uh, Eighteen is not a hit. Okay, um, you manage to uh, to kind of just dodge out of the way a little bit. Uh, as it uh, attacks you. And you can kind of tell that Medric's being attacked, but you can't see any any attacks happening at the moment, unfortunately. However, Annie, it is your turn. I will move forward. Uh, so, one, two, three. Can I fit in the square to sneak back here? Uh, yes. There's nothing pressuring you, so you can easily move through that square. And you can cool. see both uh, of the of the uh, creatures now. You can't really make out the rat. It's on the floor, basically, uh, behind debris. Um, but uh, And I forgot to give the rat initiative anyway. <laughs> so I'll quickly do that. Um, to allow it to do something, possibly. I don't expect it to do much. It's a quick little bugger, though. All right. Well, it will go after Medric does then. Okay. Um, well, I will. Uh, excuse me. Uh, shoot my arrow uh, at the big guy threatening Medric. At the big guy, yeah. Oh, that's a natural nineteen, so twenty-six. Uh, twenty-six definitely hits. Uh, Medric is beside him, so I get some. That. Nice. Indeed. Decent, decent. Nineteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Just want to make sure. Uh, yeah, that's 22 damage. Woo. Uh, hey. as, the, as the arrow pierces in, and you can, in Med and Medric, especially right in front of you, you can see it goes in and kind of gets stuck into some of the gears, and you hear this loud grinding sound on the inside. Crunch, 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 a nasty, crunch. nasty kind of hit. Well Good. done. Uh, and I will uh, tell Medric to try to hit it on the arm to try to dislodge its arm in order to give him advantage. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Medric, you're up. I will try to dislodge his arm. <laughs> uh, with advantage. Uh, you still have advantage. Yeah, yeah 22. Uh, 22? 22 is a hit. Yeah. So plus strength modifier only, right? Okay. D8. Max damage, so eleven. <laughs> so, how does this appear as you as you successfully uh, take this thing down? What does it look like? So I will hit his arm with a hammer, well, one one handed, kind of like swinging sideways as he's about to hit me, and his arm will like bounce off a nearby crate and hit him in the head, and his head's gonna like, bounce off and. The entire armor is going to crumble to the floor. Okay. That, and, that was a pitiful security system. Yeah. Uh, do you get the feeling they weren't expecting to be attacked? <laughs> kind of, sort of. Um, and then I will walk towards. Well, the rat is in your way to to walking okay. too much further. So the spirit, the spiritual weapon, will move towards the rat and take a swing at it. Okay. 16 to hit. Uh, that definitely hits. That's both my wisdom modifier, right? I believe. It is. <sighs> Three damage. Uh, because I rolled a one. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Sorry, I engaged myself in doing something else to add another thing in here that I forgot to add. <laughs> there we go. Um, three, 
three damage. Yep. Okay. It still it still seems to be going. Um, uh, but it is definitely uh, on its last legs. And I'll yell at the box with the legs. It's like, stop whatever you're doing and we're not going to destroy you. Okay. Make a persuasion roll with disadvantage as Can you just destroyed I mean, something. As we're like, smush, 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 smush. Well, Can I do intimidate is, instead? No, because you just said, oh. uh, we don't want to smash you. That's not, uh, uh, okay. that's that's trying to convince that you're on Pers its side. <laughs> Persuasion? <laughs> um, intimidation would be stop or I'll smash you. You're persuading, which is stop or and I won't smash you. <laughs> but if you want to switch it over to intimidation, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I was trying to be intimidating. I mean, I'm just like, as okay. a player, not good with words. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. I, I'm, I'm, I'm weirdly, yeah, I don't know why. Uh, go ahead and roll I intimidation. Mean, Still a disadvantage, I, I, however. Okay. I mean, watching us go smush, smush, and then stop or else we'll do the same thing. Would be kind of stop or I'll say stop again. Okay, thirteen. Uh, yeah. Let's see what it is likely to respond with. Uh, okay, I'll have it roll that. Okay, it seems to stop its motion. At least as far as you can tell. Is that your turn? Are you moving at all, or? I'll go over here so it can't like get away too much or wait. Well, I'm assuming if it tries to get away the other way, Silas will stop him. Uh, okay. Yep, Actually, no, I'll stay here. Okay. Because I just really, well, yeah, stay here. <laughs> All right. It's up to you. Uh, it is the rat's turn. Uh, the rat's eye glows focused on a medric. Uh, 17 to hit. Okay, as the beam goes beyond you and strikes the uh, box behind you, lighting it on fire. It's now burning. Uh-oh. Uh, then you hear the screech. Oops, where is he here? Uh, as I think he can make it there. Um, oops, that's a, that's a light. I grabbed the light. <laughs> but what I meant to do is grab the mechanical owl, which swoops in towards you. I think it can just, yes, it can just do a flyby, striking uh, Medric uh, as it does so, actually. Let's see here. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Knock it off. All right. All right. Okay, so yeah, it can just make it beyond Medric. There's just a couple of, of feet before it hits the ceiling. But it's able to kind of glide in between those. I don't think it's going to make much difference, to be fair. Um, but it will attempt to strike at you with its talons. Nope. Ten. Doesn't hit. It hits Spits the shield. Ah, what the hell is this? Uh, but you are now surrounded. <coughs> Granted, it's by an owl and a, and a mouse, but, you know. <laughs> Take your pick. Uh, that was their turn. Silas, you're up. Silas is going to walk over here. Okay. And what exactly is it doing? It's reaching down. It's reaching down, and from there you can see that it it's, looks like an inscribed sigil on the floor uh, with numerous bits of crystal and metal and other things that have been sort of driven into it in different points. And it looks like it's reaching out towards that, that, that uh, sigil. Silas is going to use a bonus action to switch the. Wait, how many? How often can I do that? Let me check. Once per short rest. No, can't do it again. Uh, okay, no. Silas is just going to try to wrestle its hand away and, and say, "Please, just tell us where our friend is." Um. Okay. But the main action is just to wrestle his hand away so that he can't do whatever it does. Okay, uh, you can uh, go ahead and make a, a athletics check. And it will be balanced against its athletics. This should be awful. Wow. Ha ha! Okay. I win the Battle of the Nerds. It's true. Uh, that's kind of crazy. 
uh, yeah, you you encounter surprising resistance as you grab down on one of its thin arms and realize eh, it's made of metal. It's not like it's mm-hmm. a, a simple flesh, but you are able to hold on to one of its arms, preventing it from from doing what it what it what it wanted to do. And you can feel that it, it had stopped kind of at the the uh, the shouted command of Medric anyway, but it had stopped in in position. It hadn't retreated at all. But you're kind of holding it now, uh, holding it firm. The uh, the uh, upper part with the eyes looks over towards Medric. The bottom part with the mouth turns over towards Silas. Um, please, no, do not hurt. And that's call your friends off then. Pretty much. And by my friends, I mean the rat and the owl. Because <laughs> you've already murdered the other one. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. With its with its turn. Build them back. Um, hmm. Please release. No, nothing of friends. Self destruct in three. Uh, let's see. Annie, you're up. It is struggling against you, uh, Annie. You're, you're, you're muted, muted as well. Should we go it to break struggling... this five minutes? Uh, okay. I, I just don't want to go get too much into into something. Uh, we know, can something. we can do a quick recall now. Let's do that. <laughs> is he bluffing with the self destruct? I'm pretty sure he's bluffing. Uh, you'll have to find that out in a second. Damn it. <laughs> we will be reconnecting in just one second. Do stay tuned. As we return in this tense situation, where RBA 47 has just declared self destruct in three. Annie, what are you up to? Uh, there's not much that I can do to a self destructing thing. Um, means, um, I'm going to. Is there anything on this desk that looks of interest that, like, might be useful? Um, you can spend your action investigating it. Uh, that's a natural 15, so 16. It looks to be a, a, a book of about a half a dozen uh, thick, um, um, for lack of a better term, design plans. Um, that one of them is out, outfolded. You can actually see the shape of the, of the rat um, in kind of an expanded form. The notation, um, I don't think you speak uh, the language, but I'm not sure what languages you speak necessarily. Um, but at a, gla- at a glance, it looks like a thick symbolic language uh, that has um, kind of... Actually, you would recognize the type of language. You recognize it as ancient Athlonian, uh, which okay. you probably haven't picked up as a language. Um, no. As well, there are sort of calipers and um, small gears and little tools that are there uh, and um, kind of a, a, a few uh, chassis, like small things that fit within these inside these mechanical things. You're not sure what they do unless you take more time, but um, that's basically what you're seeing there. I'll yoink the book and uh, back up and tell... Um, hmm. who has a better chance of, does the thing look like something that Medric could pick up and throw? Um, Medric is pretty strong and while it does look pretty small and spindly, only that center sort of cube of, of two feet, you're not sure how densely packed it is. So it'd be hard to say, um, he probably would have a better chance at it than he did the full barrels, but you're not entirely certain. Okay. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to go back into this corner here more, actually, and okay. tell Medric to try to... Th- uh, I don't, do something, try to throw it? I don't know. Uh, and give Medric advantage. Okay. RBA 47 <laughs> on some on some sort of of <laughs> do something throwing like to the thing so that'll be what it applies to you. uh medric it is your turn you are surrounded by animals and a dead suit of armor but otherwise right, well i will uh i did uh, say i pick up the book right yep yep you yeeted the book quickly 
Well, yo yoinked the books, I say, not yeet. Yeet would be you threw it at the thing. I'm starting to learn that one. It's a new word. Can I step on the rat? Like, can I enter its square? Uh, Actually, I think, I think she yoinked it. Medrick is about to yeet the robot. <laughs> I'm not next Pat, to you. You are spot on. Ye yeet is the opposite of yoink. Yeah, that's why I corrected myself. Um, uh, it it effectively owns the square, so you can't really move through it. It would be considered a hostile right? square. Can I go on onto the same square as my spiritual weapon? Uh, yes. Okay. I'll do that. Okay. The owl will take a swipe at you. Okay. I'm, not, I'm pretty sure you're not concerned about that. Um, no. 14 doesn't hurt, <laughs> I don't think. Just pings off the armor. Okay. Um, Silas does have a hold of RBA47. I'll go. Can I go in this square, even though it's like kind of on a crate? Uh, you can. I will say that it's it's a disadvantage for physical actions in that space because it's kind of okay. I'll, I'll stay here then. So I'll grab RBA four seven and throw him in the corner, uh, just uh, to the east of the owl. Well, as I said, Silas is holding on to him right now, rather aggressively. Oh, uh, Silas will stop if someone's about to grab it. Uh, okay. Silas isn't sure what's going on. So that'll be another contested uh, athletics check. Athletics. There's 18 total. Uh, it's going oh, to try to wriggle died, out. right? Yes. Wait, with advantage. Okay. 21 but your, he your hex was not on it. Your hex was on the uh, on the rat. No, I had moved it from the rat to it before oh, right. the fight started. Um, but but yeah, you can only no, do that once next again. Round right? I'll, next round, I'll move it, but not this turn. I thought you were going I to forgot that and you gave today. me advantage. Was, so didn't you say that? Well, no, I can do it once per day. Uh, hex normally can be moved if something hits zero hit points. Oh, okay. But I can do it once per day if it hasn't hit zero hit points, ah, which I oh, that's done. cool. Okay. Um, so it's going to try to wriggle out of your way. It does not. So uh, after being held on to by Silas, uh, you kind of easily grab the thing. And what are you doing with it? You're going to throw I'm throwing it? it to the square directly east of the owl. Uh, okay, that Fair, far. I think. Um, yeah. That will require a strength check because it is, is surprisingly heavy. It's quite dense for its size. <laughs> uh, Twenty-one. That wow. works. Okay, that works. there's no more ones. I'm, uh, I'm as a you, two. That's okay. you heave it over into the corner, uh, and it kind of skitters and lands. Uh, let's see if it can land uh, on its feet. Oh wow! It uh, easily. Okay, so lands. I guess I, I did a backflip. So yeah, it, you well, you kind of threw it right. Yeah. And. It weirdly reorients itself midway, kind of, uh, kind of like the spider-like climb it did before. All of its, all four of its limbs kind of reorient, so it's now standing. It's now standing, but its eyes are on the bottom, and the mouth on the top. But it doesn't seem to be bothered by this. And I'll move one more square away, just in case he's not bluffing. Okay. Uh, that's your turn. And I'll tell it like, don't move. All right. Uh. It's, it's not moving, but that may be for other reasons. Uh, the rat uh, kind of follows all of what you're doing, and it, it is unemotional. It doesn't care about what anything's happening. Uh, it's going to give you the stink eye, however, and fire once more at Medric. Uh, 17 nope. to hit. Pew. Bounces off again. Uh, it's going to stay where it is. The owl is... It only has a couple of different missions, and one of them is to strike, so it will it will fly by you and do a, a dive uh, on your head. Uh, where are you here? Too many windows. There you go. Uh, 22 yeah, to there. hit yeah. as it scrapes along your, your uh, forehead, leaving a kind of a gash along your forehead. Jerk. Uh, and then RBA 4-7. Uh, hmm. What is it going to do? Interesting question. Um... Okay. Uh, it is going to kind of, again, spider climb around everything uh, in and kind of uh, in and around the rat, which doesn't seem to be bothered by it, and then reaches towards the floor where you are, uh, 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 Medric. 
-hmm. and slaps its, uh, it, it uses one leg to kind of balance a little bit on, the other three, three lance out towards different spots around the circle. Uh, and the circle begins to glow. Do not want hurt. Self-destruct in two. So it needs to be on the circle to self-destruct. You can make whatever Ooh. conclusions you like. Uh, back around to Annie. You're muted. Well, I will... Uh... Give me two seconds here. Uh... I just want to see as a bunch of stuff here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do, I am going to steady aim and shoot at it. Okay. It does have partial cover from the, the knocked over barrels and the table that's there. So it just gets a plus two to its AC. Uh, that is a fiend plus seven, so dirty 20. Uh, dirty 20 hits. Okay. It's 10, 16, 18 plus four is 22. Okay. You pull back and let loose the arrow as it sort of threads through this pile of debris that's in front. And um, you you kind of catch it as its bottom and top halves are moving separately, and there's a little bit of a gap in there. The arrow sneaks its way in and kind of uh, solidly pierces through the center. Uh, around you, uh, uh, Silas and uh, Medric, you can see the mechanical limbs go stiff, and then the eyes go dim. Now... Uh, Silas and Medric, please make uh, dexterity saving throws. As you see, the the body start to crumple inward, and then <clears throat> it explodes. Six. Uh, six and twelve. Neither of you succeed. Uh, Seventeen points of uh, force damage as the thing basically implodes and then explodes outward. Uh, it destroys whatever's left of this table and the crystals that were there, that armor that was there. The rat is gone <laughs> completely. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, there's nothing left but debris kind of ha hanging around. Uh, the, the does the space, owl survive? Uh, the owl does survive. It seems like a very localized within basically five feet. Um, Medric, one thing you notice right away is the glowing has not stopped on the circle beneath you, nor was it disturbed by this. Uh, it is your turn. Sorry, guys. So you said the, the glowing was not disturbed? That's right. Hey, Apparently, Silas, whatever process it tries to start, it did succeed in starting. I'll take a swing at the owl. Okay. <laughs> Stupid owl. <laughs> 14 to hit. Uh I'm pretty sure that hits, yeah. Eight damage. Okay. Uh, it does batter one of its wings, but it seems to be still functioning. The spiritual weapon moves next to it and also takes a swing. All right. Dirty 20. That hits. Eight more damage. Okay. Um, it Whoosh. batters and breaks uh, part of its wing. It still seems to be holding on, but you can now see that it's kind of moving a little bit awkwardly, and it's trying to hoot as an owl would, but it comes across as sort of a, a, a mechanically, uh, like like metal grating at this one. That's its howl now. Oof. And I'll get off the circle, and like, Silas, what does that mean? Actually, no, I won't get off the circle yet. I'll just point towards it. Because I know Silas knows all the magical things, so I'll ask him, like, what's up with that? I don't know if it's my turn yet. Uh, not quite. In fact, it is the owl, which will be taking out its revenge. 
on Medric. Probably not, though. 16 to hit? No. Nah. Nope. Uh, it is going to be doing that as a flyby, however, and kind of land on the opposite side. Do I get an opportunity attack? Uh, no, that's the flyby opp opportunity. Okay. It, it, so it can do that without getting an opportunity attack as it flies through the space. Uh, Silas, it is your turn. Well, Silas will bend down close to Medric's feet and cast uh, Detect Magic. Um, and look at the uh, circle. Absolutely. Uh, it is now glowing with mad at magic. And in fact, as you... Um, as you activate that sense, you can see additional weaves are being formed all around it. Uh, it is strong uh, conjuration magic, uh, which I believe is a greenish color. I forgot. I haven't got my list up in front of me. Uh, strong conjuration magic, which is happening there. Um, you have a... Well, go ahead and roll Arcana, actually. Eighteen. No, very nice. You have a strong sense that this is opening up a portal. And in fact, your ring starts to uh, to respond as well. Uh -oh. um, I'll tell... Uh, okay, I will move back a bit and tell Medric that it's opening a portal. He pr should probably get off it. Okay. And Medric if I destroy the symbol, can the portal still open? I mean, are you asking Silas? Yeah. <laughs> the, universe, <laughs> the universe person doesn't answer, but um, I will say that you did notice that the explosion that came from the little creature did not disturb the circle at all. Well, the, uh, little, the little creature was weak. <laughs> yes, but you took, that for, <laughs> you took that for, for us damage. Yeah. Uh, as Medrick, you're kind of looking down like, well, maybe if I swing at this and maybe if I swing at that, you see the swirl of lights in the center of the circle and then there's this weird perspective shift as the circle deepens into a hole please make a dexterity uh -oh. saving throw i got shit for dexterity nine you're sucked through the hole uh oh you find yourself in a long tunnel so uh annie you saw medrick vanish oh no this isn't good um, hey, once it wasn't me that fell down the hole. <laughs> uh, I am going. Oh, geez, I don't know what just happened on my screen there. Everything went dark. Okay, um, I am going to steady aim and shoot an arrow at the owl. Okay. Uh, natural thirteen, so another dirty twenty. Oh, that's an easy hit. Yep. Eh, not as good. Sixteen. Sixteen. Um, you fire off another arrow at it, and the arrow kind of catches it. It's just about to leap off and probably uh, fly towards probably fly towards you and the arrow kind of catch, catches it midstream and pins it to one of the uh, 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 one of the barrel or boxes that is there and then it kind of shuts down I'm just killing everything today apparently you guys are vengeful <laughs> it's yeah. like huh the big bad is Don't gone let's just destroy mess everything with else my bartender <laughs> okay um, oh and the spiritual weapon also vanishes oh no did, does it also go come down the hole, or is it just like gone? You don't see it. No, wow. spiritual weapon isn't concentration or anything. No. If that has anything to do with it. Not really. Um, that means it is Medric's turn. Uh, Medric. I'm floating in a uh, hole. You are, and then you see the hole abruptly ending, and you come flying out of a wall into what looks like a small wooden room. Looks like it's about um, 10 feet by 15 feet. Sort of, sort of, sort of door in one side. Seems to be barred from 
Or actually, it's not barred from this side, but it is closed. Looks like there's a couple of crates here. Actually, make a make an acrobatics check as you come flying out of this to not crash into a crate or two. Acrobatics. Oh, I'm pretty sure that's a plus zero, but just let me double check just in case I'm wrong. No, that's a plus zero. Nineteen. Yeah, no problem. Hey. You come smashing through and smashing into one Superhero of the crates landing. that kind of. No, it's it's not quite that graceful. You have no control <laughs> over this, but basically you avoid any damage uh, from from this and kind of crash into a crate. Uh, that you kind of smash underneath you. Um, you kind of hear the sound of breaking glass beneath you. Um, but you are alone. You can still see the opening, however. It still seems to be swirling. I'll try to go back through it. Okay. Actually, find... I'll, I'll look around the room first. Okay, make an investigation Let... check. What's that broken glass that I just heard? Wow, not nice. 20 for investigation, See, so 19 there's all in the 20s. Um, <laughs> it looks to be shards of pottery that are broken into smaller pieces now. Um, you recognize the style of potter pottery, and in fact, even recognize a couple of Athlonian symbols on the side. Uh -oh. This is probably an ancient artifact. I'll pick up the pieces. Okay, uh, on to Silas's turn. You're muted. Is the portal still there? Uh, it seems to be still there. You want to take a closer look? Well, uh, if it hasn't changed, he's going to take a quick look around to see if there appears to be anything that catches his eye on this desk before he decides to jump in, too. Are you taking a closer look at the portal, then? So, perception check. No, desk. Okay, investigation like, check. Basically, it's I, like, I already it's... rated the desk. Yep. But he's just looking for, is, is there anything that looks like a partially worked crystal or something other than the book that you picked up? Uh, so, okay. investigation. Six. Aside from the piles of crystals that have, that were knocked over by the barrels and much of them smattered, smashed into small little bits and pieces, it looks as though the only thing really maybe of value was that book and maybe this strange metal sort of cage-like thing with some moving parts that you really don't understand. Uh, you could take that if you want. He'll grab the cage thing and jump into the hole after Medrick. Okay. Uh, you two find yourself in a, uh, a bizarre Actually, sorry. shifting. First he'll go to the edge of the hole and look down. Is it just a hole or is it like a portal energy thing that he can't see through? Uh, it looks almost oh. like um, you kind of imagine looking up the spout of a hurricane or a tornado, I should say. So it's twisting and turning with energy and kind of moving back and forth. Um, as you are taking a closer look at it, you do realize that the crystals around the outside are going out one by one. Do I see Medrick? Nope. Okay, then I'll hop in. Okay. Find yourself in a twisting hole. Uh, actually, I meant to put how many, that uh, on there too. For the broken potter, the, bro the broken artifact, how many, like, is it like just shattered in big pieces or like a bunch of tiny pieces? You'll be spending a little time looking at that and we can come back to that after. But basically... It was big pieces uh, until I run it, into you and now it's small pieces. Yeah, that's that's a good way to describe it. Yeah, it was, it was bigger pieces, uh, probably. Maybe even intact things, but now it is nothing more than rubble. Damn it. Um, Annie, you've seen, well, people vanish. Uh, everybody's jumping in this hole, so. It's a weird choice, uh, really, when you're thinking about it. You're kind of like, why are they jumping in the hole? I mean, like Medrick fell in the hole. Upstairs, so I, um, I guess. I mean, there's a whole other spot to this. There's a lot of space in here. Yeah, there's a bunch of room. Um, everything is dead. Um, that you can see. Is there, yeah. Um, that statue there. Was there anything mm -hmm. about that statue that I had noticed? I forget the description of it. It looked bit. like a statue of an elven man holding his heart hand up, but you didn't have a closer look at it. Okay. Um, and everything on this table here, that's destroyed, right? Smashed. You could take time looking through it. Maybe you would find something that was, that survived, but you did see uh, Silas kind of pawing through it. Okay. Uh, I will then 
say, well, shit, guys, and jump into the hole. <laughs> okay. You jump through, but you also notice that the crystals were counting down. And as you look back up, there's no hole above you. Make a dexterity saving throw. Silas is going to try and catch her. You That's not her. horrible. No, Silas is waiting because she's probably coming through like we did. You jumped uh, in the hole. There is no waiting. Dirty 20. Uh, dirty 20. Okay. You jump through and feel this sort of snap behind you. And as you glance over your shoulder, you realize that whatever end of the tunnel that was behind you is disappearing. Uh, and it is it is vanishing quickly. So what you kind of end up having to do is swim, if you will, to try to move yourself through the hole faster. Uh, trying to propel yourself. It's kind of like, can you fall faster than gravity? Apparently. Maybe. Uh, I will now have uh, Silas and uh, and Annie make dexterity saving throws. As you did not see anybody in front of you or behind you, Silas, but very quickly, rapidly catching up to you, you might. As you see the opening in front of you opening up to a dim room, which you can see fairly... No, it's a dim room. You can't see it very well. <laughs> Uh, so we got a save of seven from uh, Silas and from yep. Annie. Oh, Silas. Oh, you, you need a second one from me? Uh, yes. The first one okay. was, was literally, do you manage to swim ahead of this or is it going to catch you? The second one is, uh, do you come bowling out of the hole? Okay. Um, so, uh, oof. Silas comes out head first. Smashes into the ground, rolls over, and and bowls into another one of the, the barrels. Uh, Medrick, you're kind of looking at the barrels, going, I wonder if these other ones are smash, as Silas hey, comes yeah, smashing right through one of the barrels, turning it into very little more than splinters and rock. Uh, that's six points of uh, bludgeoning <laughs> damage. Yep. Uh, and, and, and Annie, uh, you kind of come tumbling. You're already sort of tumbling end over end. You see the edge of it. It's weirdly enough, you kind of stick your hands out, grab the edge of the wall, and then are able to kind of roll out and tumble and come to your feet. And you see uh, Medrick looking slightly uh, 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 perturbed, and Silas is somewhere among the box. I think that was our way out, and I think it's gone. Crap. Where are we? I have no clue. Silas? And I look at Silas, and he just, he just looks like he's way out in space. But it's, his, his icon is like something oh. space ish. Yeah. And his camera, like. Silas has a concussion. <laughs> mm. So I will try to. I mean, the illustrate. only reason I jumped in was because Silas jumped in, and at that point, we might as well stay together. But, like. Yeah. In fact, after Annie comes through, um, Silas, you can sense with the, with the ring. The, the portal closing, even though you don't necessarily have the wherewithal to look up at the moment as you are in, currently in box. You're inboxed. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see anything. I'm going to try to remedy that part of the map. I don't think I can see anything. Oh, I can almost see something. Uh, one second. Uh, where you're at right now, uh, it is wooden construction. Uh, looks like it is um, crudely made. Um, board upon board, not, uh, not uh, um, you know, not notched very sophisticatedly. Uh, just looks like it was crudely, roughly squared. Um, the, the boxes resemble much of the boxes you'd seen up above as well. Why am I not? Oh. Sorry, there's a bug in roll 20 that when you scroll up or down, it resets to the corner, which is not what I meant to do. All right. I, I can't see Silas and Annie's tokens on my map. Uh, Even though they're like I right can next see to me, I can, is. I can just see like a faint outline of them. But uh, as soon as I move my token, like. That's you, probably your vision range. It's. Uh, I mean, mine is looking weird, too. I'm going to send you a... Yeah, I'll see if I can... If 
fix that a little bit. Uh, you should have the full vision, but I'm going to also uh, drop a torch there. See if, oh, am I on the right? Yeah, I'm seeing the same thing Annie posted in the screenshots. There, that should probably make it a little easier. If that actually... So it's not that I can't see. It's oh, there we go. For some reason, Silas and Medrick are like faint. Yeah, we're ghosts. It's... We actually died. No, but yeah, I, I can see things now. Fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm gonna lower down that torch to a ten feet. Again, I did not have time to do the uh, uh, the uh, full walls. Normally, you create the walls for um, for limited uh, light and vision. I don't have those, so I will ask you that if you see something beyond a wall, just pretend you don't see it there. <laughs> <laughs> Take it like a normal map. Yeah, yeah. I wanted a little bit of surprise, but there's only so much I can do. Yeah. Um, I don't know, like falling through a portal kind of surprised me, but... <laughs> <laughs> you do see on the wall where the portal was. There does seem to be that set of symbols there, and there are a set of crystals around it as well. Uh, it's just inert at the moment. Um, thinking about it, you kind of imagine it almost like, uh, well, an emergency escape, or a short-term door, and the door swings closed on its own. So the symbol, like, in the warehouse is probably an emergency escape for that guy, except he didn't get to use it, because he blew up. Maybe. And now I'm sore because he blew up in my face. I am sorry. That's true. That is true. He did blow up in your face. Now, there is a door, uh, even though it's shown as an open hallway, there is a doorway there. Um, again, this one looks like a standard door. He probably, he or she probably bought a door and just transported it down here, but you can't really buy a room, so they had to build the rest of it. Um, but it's a normal full size door. Well, Silas is going to cast a healing word on himself first. Okay. Yay, I get seven points back. A little bit of oil creeps out over uh, Silas's skin. And the wounds seem to be reduced. Um, well, this seems to be the only way out, so he's going to try opening the door. Okay. It opens easily enough. Um, however, the short connecting hey, hallway, trapped. which leads to a much larger hallway, um, shifts from the wood, which you can see kind of was um, framed up uh, against whatever surface this is. Instead, it appears to be a dark... Uh, do you see color with your vision too, uh, Silas? It's kind of weird. Well, if he's in dim light, then he sees with dark vision, which is black, uh, gray and white, but he sees normally because it's only okay. dim. If it's complete <laughs> darkness, then he sees it as a bright, sunny day in full color. Okay. Well, that's that's weird. Yes. Um, you're within uh, range kind of of Medric's light, so it's a little bit difficult to yeah. see. But you can make up the distinct shift in in the texture and in the color and in the solidity of the walls around you. Where the, the wood gives way very abruptly to this sort of dark... Uh, slightly shiny chitinous material that has a slight reddish hue to it. Um, and it feels very, the, the, the air feels uh, fairly warm as well. There's an acrid element of the air and without even thinking it, you kind of flick out your tongue and it tastes bitter. Um, it tastes kind of, um, kind of acrid and bitter. Uh, give me a perception check, uh, Silas. Natural yeah. one. You're not sure, but it it, uh, it it kind of breathe in a lung full of this. Can make me a constitution saving throw? Five. It, ca it causes you to gag a little bit, and you all hear Silas's uh, uh, throat kind of close a little bit as he coughs, and, and, and uh, you accidentally bite your tongue. Uh, take one point of piercing <laughs> damage uh, as you kind of gag involuntarily. But then you kind of realize it... it the air tastes like bile. Uh, it tastes like that horrible leftover feeling after you've thrown up. 
Uh-oh. Yeah. And the thick, We're the air is kind of thick with probably inside one of those with, giant uh, creatures again. With well, acid. Silas will come out here and say, and uh, tell him, I'm not sure, but we might be in a creature. It tastes not like, again. Or, it tastes right. like puke in here. Uh, from where you are, <laughs> from where you are, you can see um, that the the walls, although I, my tool only allows me to really draw square edged or square cornered type walls, although I was able to modify them a little bit, they are much less regular than that. Uh, they look, in fact, uh, a little more round and they look as though they've got tons of little abrasions all over them. Uh, on the far east from where you are, you can see there is what looks like a stoppage. Um, it does not look and match entirely what the rest of this looks like, uh, although it does look a little bit like uh, overlapping plates of the same sort of thing. But you can see interwoven or bolted in or, or screwed through uh, metallic uh, uh, slats and different pieces that are that are holding uh, that seem to be holding or manipulating or some other some other way kind of kind of uh, part of that structure. Um, but it's not something we could get through. It seems to be blocking the, the entrance, yes, or blocking that way. Um, the three of you hear loud voices uh, shouting. Um, it's hard to make out anything of what they're saying at the moment, uh, but you can, each of you roll a, let's say an insight check. Dirty 20. Nice. Natural 20 for a total of 21. Apparently, insight is your jam. I like 16. this. 16. Plus 9. Uh, yeah, so 16 as well. So um, it takes you a few moments to recognize one of the voices. Uh, it is uh, strained, uh, almost... Uh, um, uh, almost a little bit un unrecognizable, but some of the phrasing, some of the words that he's using, you recognize Dr. Marigold's voice, uh, angrily shouting. Uh, and actually, not shouting, angrily arguing. The other voice you hear is calmer. Um, it, it's not strained, but there is something in the voice which is a little bit odd. And then you realize that it's got a little bit of that mechanical sound that uh, uh, RBA47 had in its voice. Uh, but it seems much more calm and uh, uh, spitting back uh, responses that seem confident. The words themselves are difficult to make out. Um, you get uh, a few words here and there. Um, uh, Marigold at one point shouts out the word fool, which is uh, kind of clear. Uh, and then there's sort of a, 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 a laughter that responds to that. Uh, and then you can't make out most of the other words, but there's something like, you're the fool. Um, you gave up all that power, and for what, uh, essentially? And you can hear that argument happening. It seems muffled by whatever this barrier is by you. So it sounds like it's off behind the barrier? Uh, yes. Okay. Well, okay. I'll give myself well, a heal, because I'm pretty sure there's going to be initiative coming up. <laughs> Yeah, Silas is thinking the same thing. Uh, what do you want us to do, boss? And he's casting another healing word out of the ring. Hey, nice. Plus nine. Uh, the ring ha is is no longer buzzing for you, uh, um, Silas, which indicates yep. probably that there's no presence of an immediate portal. Yep. Um. I, I think that that's where we need to be. Yep. You hear the sound uh, of kind of grating and scraping and thrumming uh, coming uh, down towards your direction uh, from the eastern side beyond this portal. And it gets louder and louder. Kind of a kachong, 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 something uh, almost... Uh, heavy enough that you can start to feel the vibrations a little bit as well. Um, do I see anything with tech magic right now? Out of the ordinary? Uh, yes. Um, let me see here. Um, 
there would have been a brief residual uh, power from the circle itself. Again, yeah. conjuration magic. Um, there's probably um, the 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 walls, the non wooden walls, and most of that do give off a strange sort of color of magic, but you're not quite sure what it is. Uh, it doesn't appear to be so much a magical spell, so much as a magical wall or a magical substance. Um, there is no magic on the the uh, the portal itself, the blocked portal, aside from where the 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 matter touches the metal. Okay, I will whisper to them that the walls seem magical, but not that blockage down at that end. Okay. Um, you hear that loud ka-chung, 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 as you see in front of you the portal kind of uh, uh, um, shake a little bit as if something hit it, and then that ka-chung, ka-chung, ka-chung starts to move away quietly. The portal like the door to our east? Yes. Yeah. Like something I'm struck gonna the door. I'm going to run over here and look through side. the slats. What was that thing? There's no slats. It's like a solid, a solid uh, substance now. Well, it's overlapping okay. chitinous uh, uh, elements that have. Okay, formed. I thought you said there's metallic slats in it. There are metallic slats bolted into the substance. Okay, never mind then. Hmm. Is there like a way, a way to open it? You can investigate it if you want. I'll do my best. Yeah, I can see how solid 17. it seems to be. Okay. It's pretty uh, solid as, to me. As you're kind of kind of tapping on it. Um the the where the, the deep red substance is, it does seem to be just as solid as the walls are, which is to say very, very solid. Um the metal is metal, so, solid bolts, a little bit rusted here and there, so it's been here for a while. Um Medrick, as you're kind of looking it over, um, it you kind of get a weird sense of familiarity almost from some of the elements of this. It's not that you're seeing this directly before, but it reminds you a little bit of the uh, the yep. the por portal doorways caves. in the um, well in the uh, the arm that you were investigating right. before, uh, and you're kind of flashing back to that. It's not the same exactly. Um, but it has a similarity to it, and you do know there were ways to open those as doors. So this is probably a door, um, but you're not quite sure um, exactly what kind of door it is or how to activate it. Yeah, I'll tell this to my companions. It's like, yeah, this is a door. There's got to be a way to open it. I just don't know how. Actually, no, for the 17, uh, you do see points that were similar to the little claws that... Uh, RBA47 had as though they could be fit in different locations around it. Crap, we should have brought one of its arms over. And I'll, I'll make a mention of the little holes to Annie. It's like, hey, uh, could your lockpicks fit, like, fit into that or like do something? Do I think that I could do something with lockpicks? Possibly. The spots are about four feet uh, uh, apart uh, at their closest. So it would be quite a hard stretch, and you don't have four sets of lockpicks? Yeah. Not really. So if start we could find one of those things and start to hear the loud ka chung 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 sound again coming closer. Or what if we just knocked? I mean, there's obviously people on the other side. I don't want him to, like, straight up kill my gold either. Yeah, I suppose. Hmm. Chung, chung, chung. The loudness now, it overtakes any her heard conversation that was on the other side. You know, what's, what's the other way? Maybe we can find one of those metal things and beat its arm off and use it to open the door. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't have anything with me that's really able to do that i don't have much for tools here one of the little crystals that or one of the the spots where the hands would go a little crystal lights up and kind of starts blinking as though as the sound gets louder so wait a minute second i look at the, up i look at the cage thing oh i think something's coming through 
Maybe we should back into the doorway. Yeah. And as you kind of moving, them. as you kind of move back, uh, you do hear as as the bolts kind of let go a little bit, and the entire thing unfolds, revealing a space uh, there as a gigantic rolling ball of metal and bone comes tearing on through. Uh, and you can see it as it passes by, ka-chung, ka-chung, ka-chung. Uh, and it is scouring the walls, the ceiling, the floor with uh, hundreds of tiny little mechanical and sometimes bone arms uh, as it scrapes its way through. You also hear, as the, uh, the, the portal opens or closes behind it. And it sort of bounces down the hallway. Very, very what quickly. What the fuck was that? Uh, its speed, by the way, if you if you want a, a relative number, is sixty. Hmm. As it kind of rolls on down. Some sort of cleaner, I guess. Um, I'm gonna look at the cage thing that I grabbed. Okay. Does this have um, any parts that might be useful for sticking in those finger holes? Uh. It's, it's sort of a self-contained cage. As you look at it more and more, it's about the size of the owl. And make a... I'll give it to you for free. It, it kind of resembles the the rib cage of, of an owl, but only in an abstract way. It doesn't uh, match rib for rib, but it's kind yeah. of the central, the central core of one of those. Hmm. What if we just put our own fingers in the holes? Maybe that would open it. Maybe. I'm going to stick the, the owl ribs into my pocket. Okay. Um, oh, by the way, I found this Athlonian artifact, but it's in pieces. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you we can see that the room? <laughs> you didn't, um, aside from what you crushed into. Um, mm. Most of what you find, uh, well, the crates that, that uh, Medric ran into were... Uh, probably more uh, similar to those vases you had found before. Um, little bits and pieces. Um, make an investigation check, whoever wants to roll the room, essentially. Somebody who doesn't have a minus one. I'll, I'll let Silas do it. I'm really not good at... I'll, I'll cast things. guidance on Silas. Okie dokie. You got this. You're the intelligent one. Uh, yeah, but my, I, I'm not trained in investigation, unfortunately. Oh, shit. Yeah, neither am you I. I have a minus one. You're, you're the one who has the positive. The thingy? There we go. <laughs> Is someone assisting? Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'll i assist you by... Uh... Well, I mean, it, well, you gave me guidance, but I mean, yeah. is someone actually assisting as well? I mean, I can help. Sure. Just tell me where to search, boss. Uh, well, the artifact I landed on was here. So. It was earlier. Well, if I'm at advantage, that's 18 plus a D4, so four more. Wow, okay. So, yeah, we roll the room and get a 22. All right, you do find um, in uh, that that box there was those, those, uh, those crates. Uh, in the bottom of a, a one of the uh, uh, vases has what looks like a, a a bag of some sort of powder. You're not not sure what the powder actually is. It's non magical in nature. Uh, it seems to be about fist size, a little bit heavier than than uh, than you might expect for its size. Uh, you do find also uh, miscellaneous uh, metallic bits and pieces. Um, looks like they're scavenged, uh, scavenged from um, wagons or from. Uh, uh, there's even a pocket watch in there. There's there's uh, mechanical pieces, somewhat similar that that also would have been uh, used in the lighthouse. Some of the stuff that Jonas was using there, um, and it, it's it's weird because there's also what looks like you know a, a suitcase of clothing. Um, looks like a uh, a uh, young man's clothing. Um, nothing particularly fancy about that. Uh, looks like a bunch of miscellaneous uh, 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 cargo, almost as though these crates were either grabbed incorrectly or just the whole lot of crates was taken, as well as this particular one. 
um, you find a letter of uh, uh, a bill of lading, essentially, uh, which includes uh, the the uh, uh, basically uh, metal ore was one of the things listed there, uh, as well as uh, 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 carving supplies and a bunch of miscellaneous things. At the very bottom, you see the company it was meant to go to was Cartwright Industries or Cartwright. What's it called? Cartwright uh, Import Export. Hmm. Who you recall was the uh, the yep. uh, the person who'd hired you to find where yeah. his cargo had gone to. And he thought that was the diamond. So maybe this is linked to the diamond, or maybe the diamond just got blamed. Uh, we get ten minutes. So we can continue on for another hour, or we could bring this particular moment to a close and restart from here. Uh, I don't really have bird is coming home here in a bit, so. I don't know which of that is a vote for. <laughs> so I would like to go sooner rather than stick another hour. Okay. Um, so you've been able to, I should say there's one more, where is it? Uh, are the vases you mentioned are they the same as the vase I picked up uh, earlier, like se many sessions ago? The one for who shall not be named. Yes, and you do recognize that name in Athlonian across the uh, uh, across the edge of it. Uh, what was your total? Twenty two. Yes. Okay. Uh, in another pouch, uh, in uh, the bottom of one of these vases, which you now kind of realize the vases themselves are being used to smuggle perhaps something else in, or maybe the people drop something into the vases, uh, you find a small bag. The small bag contains a pearl, uh, iridescent pearl, uh, which does glow with, ooh, what are we going to call that? Probably conjuration magic. Hmm. I will let them know that and then pocket it because I have no idea what else it's. I feel like anything that's in the vases, we should pocket. Yeah, I don't know what this packet of powder is, but we should probably do I recognize keep it just in case. Um, how do you recognize the powder? But would I recognize it? Or? Well, how are you trying to recognize it? What skill would be involved here? What do you think uh, it is to start with, I guess, if you were going to use a specific skill or... You well, could I'm, I'm hoping it's it, a pouch of diamond dust because I can use that for stone skin, but that's you, just like... You could, you could <laughs> take a taste of it, I suppose. It's not immediately apparent what this is until you investigate it. Well, Silas will take some out. Like, is it dust or sand or... It is a texture somewhere between the two. It's It's kind of very fine very sharp edged glints a little bit in the light the only light being uh medric at the moment mm. yeah medric can you stop that um well, i actually can't <laughs> nope uh Fine, i'll put my cloak over my head <laughs> <laughs> uh silas will like just wet the tip of his pinky finger get some of the stuff on it and then take a lick. Okay. Um, Tastes uh, expensive. You take one point of damage as the sharp edges of whatever this is, this very tough, solid substance. It has no particular taste, dust. but uh, make a perception check. One, minus one. Okay. Ew. <laughs> uh, Whatever it is, it just hurts. Maybe it was like used pain. for maybe it was used for traps. Maybe it was used for something else. You're not sure. An alchemist could easily identify it, most likely. It's small and sharp. Well, let, let's save it, and we can get Doctor Marigold to identify it once we rescue him. Yeah, it's reflective, so maybe it's little. It looks like a bunch metal. of little diamonds drawn into a powder. Maybe. Or possibly uh, glass, tiny mica flakes, or glass, or something. Well, he rolled it around in his fingers, and it didn't shred them. So I'm assuming it's not glass, but 
I mean, it could be metal powder or it could be mica or it could be a few things. So, yeah, just pocket. All right. Steal carefully, then pocket. Yeah. You hear the chung, chung, chung sound of that thing coming back through, rolling back through on what's so like a regular return. behind this thing? Yeah. Yeah. If, can we rush in behind it uh, and try and get through the door? That one. Uh, you can. Oh, yeah. No, it would be that one. You might want to get out of the way. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. As you see this thing kind of coming down, and it is this this horrific version of of kind of uh, metal and teeth and flesh, and uh, it has this strange sort of feeling. You can certainly try whatever you want uh, as it approaches, and you can see as it approaches this this uh, space, this door. That's when the lights start going off. One, and then two, and then mm -hmm. three. Uh, indicating yep. probably to whoever's there, don't stand in front of the door, <laughs> or whatever this yep. is. Yep. Size is going to wait, and then yeah, like run right in behind. Let's it. do this. All right. Uh, it opens. Let's have some dexterity saving throws. Fuck. Oof! 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 Twenty-five. Okay. As you dive on oh, through. Oh, that twenty. That twenty. As you dive on through. 19. 19, as you also dive on through. The door closes just behind you, and Silas, you feel it just almost catch your boot as you're traveling through. Within that uh, 20, though, then I do get I, I do the superhero landing. And I nail it. Uh, no, the, <laughs> the difficulty was 20. Oh, okay. So in that 20 is, with no, with no bonus, exactly what you needed. Uh, right. And yes, it would have been bad. Uh, this You see this thing kind of move down and then start to move down a right-hand hallway. You've made it through that. Now you can start to hear as this thing moves away uh, those those voices arguing once more and easily recognize Dr. Marigold. But you do not know who Dr. Marigold is talking to. All you hear is the plaintive tones that are in the strained voices of Dr. Marigold and the confident mocking tones of whoever is responding, saying things something like, You had it all once. We could have been the best. But I found a better master to teach me so much more. And that's, I think, where we'll button this up for today and call it to a close. I want to thank my players for joining me today. I hope you guys had fun on this first stage. I've had Marigold on my mind for a long time, and the danger of something that's on my mind for a long time is it gets more and more compl complicated, but also uh, hopefully more and more embedded within the story, which you will probably... Uh, find uh, the Marigold and Clockwinder story. Hopefully I can have it release a little bit here and there. Uh, as you might be able to tell if you zoom out, um, yeah, I get a little crazy on the map too, so we'll see how that mm. works out. Uh, so once again, thank you uh, to my players for joining me today. Uh, I hope you guys had fun in this yeah. crazy little part one, stage one of the, the rescue. Stage two, I guess, really. Uh, we will return once again. Uh, we have another time to play just before the holidays. Looks like the 19th of December is going to be our next game. And then we're probably going to have to work out exactly when we meet again. Uh, there may be opportunities to meet more often, so you may see, see additional streams pop up. The best idea is to go to twitch.tv slash ENCAF1 and subscribe. If you do that, you'll get a warning whenever we go on. I'll try to find a way to uh, let people know. You can also go to Watchers of the Drowned Isles on Legends of the, on, uh, Facebook. That's it. Facebook.com Legends of the Drowned Isles. Watchers of the Drowned Isles. I'll get it right eventually. Oh, I should already have this in front of me. Watchers of the Drowned Isles is uh, a place for uh, folks to discuss what's going on. And we do also post uh, summaries. Pat's been doing the summaries for us. Thank you very much, Pat. Pat. Uh, and also, of course, you can watch this in all the previous episodes, and including Campaign 1, which ended uh, ambiguously. <laughs> did not end because, of course, uh, COVID got in the middle. Uh, but I think we had a lot of fun, and there's some really cool background stories. If you're wondering why some of this the players seem to be re reacting to familiarly, if that's a word, uh, that would be one of the ways to find it. You can find Campaign 1 and Campaign 2 on youtube.com slash ENCAF1. All right, folks, that's it for today. Uh, again, I hope you had fun, and we'll do it all again in two weeks. Bye.